Thanks, son. Test something real quick. <laughs> All right, so those are some of the <laughs> basic <coughs> bas fillers. Yeah. yeah, basic shtick stuff. Yeah. Just to practice on Just this. to get a giggle. Yeah, this is get out of the way there. I need this a little closer to me. And there goes AC right on cue. Hmm. It's all right. We will overcome. Okay, here we go. Welcome back. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. On today's show, Shark, and did Papa John say a bad word? Run, fat ass, run. And some menu items are going bye bye. And you, have you ever been Snapchat, Snapchatted to death? My name is a. Right. I just stumbled. I tried a new opening just to switch it up a little bit. That was my new opening. So my name is the Deacon. Over to my far right hand side is Teacher Man. It's a new day. It is a new day, and we've got all our cameras up and running. And and we're we're going on Twitch, by the way, with all this. Uh, if you look. If you're watching the the video that we have now, you'll see Teacher Man in the left-hand corner or right-hand corner, depending on what side of the screen you're standing on. <laughs> and at the very bottom of the screen, you're going to see all the stuff that we um, – you actually see my, my desktop, my the, the computer screen right here in the studio of what goes on here in the studio. And you're going to see this little thing ticking by, and you're going to see me scrolling my little cursor around. So that kind of gives you a little bit more interaction. Uh, when you're watching us and we're talking about things, and, and Teacher Man's got his own monitor over there, and he can see all the stuff that's going on. And I'm loving it. Yeah. I'm it, loving it. Well, when, yeah. when I when I talk about you know this person's face, or this person did this, or a video, boom, I can put it right here on, on my screen. Teacher Man sees it, and uh, you can see it right there on our on our video right there. Well, Te it's nice to be part of the program. Yeah, and you, <laughs> it, it brings you in a little bit closer, a little yeah. bit personal of, of what's going on. Teacher Man, how you doing? Everything going all right? Uh, it was a great week. It was a great week, and he's, except I did a favor for a friend, and it uh, what, didn't turn out the way it was supposed to turn out. What favor did you do? Well, I, I brought his truck in <laughs> to be surfaced, and, um, you know, it was fine. Uh -huh. It was fine. I And I even stopped at Walmart on the way back, picked up a couple of prescriptions, mm -hmm. got back in the truck. No alarms, no dashboard lights, no nothing. The only thing it said there was, because uh, one of the things that was done was an oil change. Uh huh. A hundred percent oil life left, or whatever that says. A hundred percent is left. Okay. Or whatever. And um, no sooner did um, the guy I did the favor for pick up his truck, and uh, he didn't get around the corner, and <laughs> all the bells and whistles started going off, <laughs> and he's uh, thinking. What the fuck did this guy do? <laughs> <laughs> so, is everything all right? Is the is the truck working now, or have you talked to him? Well, well there's a there's a little um, a, a thing that you can hook to uh, hook up to the car's computer, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to reset. They can do that just by clicking a couple of things on this thing. So why didn't they do it in the first time? I well, they they did well according to what I saw, they did. Uh huh. But apparently, they didn't do it right. Uh -huh. And uh, the bells and whistles went off later on, and the lights on the dashboard came <laughs> on, and the, the airbags came out, and the tail parachute came out, and uh, I mean, it was just a mess. But the truck still runs and everything. It, it what I mean, it, everything's good with the truck outside of the little bells. And it's not anything drastic, right? No, but this guy's a picky guy. Yeah. And he likes his stuff right and tight. <laughs> he sounds like an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so you can give us a call here at the station. We're live in the Queen City stu studio located in downtown Charlotte, North Carolina, 407-448-8800. Text us live at any time at 
888-888-8800. Make sure you go to the Profit Radio website, and there's a little blue box at the very bottom that says Be Heard. You click on that. You do a little recording. It sends us right here to the studio. We put you live on the air. Some people don't like to be talking on the radio. <laughs> Some people don't like to be talking on the radio. <laughs> Some people get, you know, a little, uh, hold on, I'm going to try this. Oh, I didn't even have a thing. I'm holding. Yeah, some people don't like to talk on the radio. Oh, yeah, not at all. <laughs> but uh, so if you're shy or anything, you wanna you wanna leave us a message or, or whether you love us or hate us, go to the Be Heard section at the Profit Radio website. We'll talk about it. Yeah, and we'll talk about you. <laughs> that way, you don't have to be embarrassed. <laughs> oh, so uh, so the truck's okay. Uh, you've got a trip coming up or something? Yeah, yeah. The end of the month, I'm going to go up to see my mom again. Um, the, the last weekend in, Ju- in July. Now, hold on. Isn't all your vacation days gone? Uh, no, I'm, I'm on. I have nonstop vacation days. Well, it's that's, called retirement. That's not well. <laughs> retirement, yes. Oh, well, here, yes, the, here, here at the, the radio st- station. Uh, well, I'm going to have to take a beating on the pay end of it. You know. All right. Because you know, if you don't, no working, no pay. That's right. Yeah. When you're not here, you don't get your your bonus check. Yeah. Or your your weekly check, which is posted right there behind me. Uh, you, well, actually, we got some new green screens and stuff in here, so you can't see what's going on behind the the studio. Speaking of green. Uh huh. You know, I did not have to mow my lawn this week. Yeah, it's been dry as a... What do you oh, say? Oh, Pop- dry as a popcorn fart. Popcorn fart. Yeah. I mean, holy mackerel. And I, what's up with no rain? I don't know. I, I, I mean, and we need it badly. We need it badly. Yep, located in uh, the Queen City studio here. Yeah, I haven't got any rain or anything. Oh, actually, I take that back. We got about twenty minutes of rain, but this is not agricultural talk. This is yeah. not livestock talk. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. This is Deacon Live, and, and I want to talk about uh, something that you were going up to see your mom, and you. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. You were going to rib your mom because her favorite place to eat was. Uh oh, I I hop. Right. Well, it was I hop, and now I hop. Well, that's and, one of her. Any any place she can get breakfast. Right. She's a pancake hound. Right. And being that Pancakes was in that name, boy, that was she beeline to that place. So uh, IHOP changed her name to IHOB, and <laughs> we were going to tell her that they weren't serving pancakes anymore. <laughs> Unfortunately, they just this week changed it back to IHOP. So, IHOP. Yep. So they took they took the B and they flipped the B back around to the P. Well, and that's like that's like the old New Coke. Oh, hold on, hold on. Did I say that right? They flipped the P back around to the B. Oh, that's right. that's horrible. The B the B around back to the P. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you said it right. All right, just checking. <laughs> so, but the, what they're doing is, it, which is smart, they're actually doing, I believe, fifteen to twenty percent off their pancakes now. Yeah. Just to bring that that you know, we're sorry, you know, come back in, people that love, yeah. you know, yeah. love you, you know, we're back to classic Coke. Classic Coke. <laughs> everything's good. So we apologize. We apologize. So. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Good. Uh, that's going to be uh, three weeks there with Mama. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, God bless her, she fell again. Uh, what do you mean, God bless her, she fell? That's I, bad. I, mean, I know, I know, but I mean, God bless her and keep her from falling. Holy mackerel! What was she doing? Was she jumping off? And she fell. She fell with the damn walker, and that, and uh, that fell on her and bruised her all up. And she's. I mean, even with the walker, she spins around too quick, and and she gets dizzy and loses her balance, and ba boom. Did she fall in her little uh, studio apartment, or did she fall yes, out she in the... Fe- no, she fell in her apartment. Did she really? Yeah. Son of a gun. she okay? Uh, yes, yeah, she's okay. Okay, because yeah. we're all worried about her. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> as long as she doesn't fall when I'm there, because I don't know if I can get her up myself. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see. Well, good, good. And you're flying out? Yes, um, yes, Southwest. My usual. I have my usual seat. Okay, and make sure. Do me a favor. I don't know if you've heard this story, but make sure um, you don't have any issues or anything that that when you're flying that you actually have to land the plane. All right. Well, I could land the plane if I had. Well, to. not you physically <laughs> land the plane. I'm talking about anything that happens to where you actually they have to land the plane because of you. Oh, because of me. Because oh, no. oh wow. I mean, outside of a heart attack, I don't know. Well, (laughs) or I could just die in the seat. So, the Delta Airlines a few weeks back, they actually had to do an emergency landing, and uh, this gentleman—I don't know if I can pronounce this correctly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the best I can. Bolo, Bolutif. Oh God! Shut up! Shut up! Hold on. on. Let me put my uh, eyes on here and look at that. I'm gonna turn this off. I know I got all the stuff in the background going. So it's B O L U T F E O L O R O N D A. 
Bolot. Anyways, he was screaming and acting. Bolotifi Olorunda. Wait, say that again. Bolotifi Olorunda. That's the guy. That's the guy that uh, actually was. Uh, he was screaming and acting erratically on a recent flight to um, that he was on, and the the flight attendant and everyone um, were freaking out and stuff. So they actually had to land the plane. He's like, you know, you know, don't touch me, don't touch me again. You'll regret it and stuff. And when you say don't touch me, you'll regret it. Bob, that's a threat. And you freak out, and this is in 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 Las Vegas, or I'm sorry, Las Vegas, Los Angeles area. Yeah, and uh, they landed this seven Boeing seven thirty seven uh, in May May thirtieth. Two federal air marshals uh, accompanied him. Uh, one air marshal protected the cockpit while the other guy tried to keep the the what's his name? Oba Babatundi. Sure, <laughs> tried to keep him calm. And you know, can you imagine that? And you know, everyone's probably thinking, you know, nine eleven, nine eleven again, nine eleven, which we all know was an inside job, never happened. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. That's all false. All <laughs> right. false. Just like the Holocaust. Right, Holocaust is false yeah. too. And but, they arrested him. So, uh, yeah, they, they pulled him out of the plane, they arrested the guy, and uh, they actually, Delta said, you know what, buddy, um, because you were acting badly and uh, you poor decisions and whatnot, he uh, had to pay $9,118 for this landing. Restitution. Uh, well, he ought to pay for the other people's flights, too. Well, I, I guess so. And it says, Washington State man also is facing up to six months in prison and up to a fine of $5,000 just for his actions. So he's looking at $9,000 from Delta plus yeah. plus the 5000 and six months in jail. So, I mean, when you're on a plane... If you disrupt a flight, man, you're going to get arrested. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, barring a health issue or something like that. I right. mean, if God forbid you have a heart attack or something on the plane, they're not going to arrest that's un- you. Yeah, that, right. yeah, that's uncontrollable. But um, well, unless you, if you're a big fat fuck, <laughs> I mean, that's controllable. To well, that's what they have those extender belts for. Right. <laughs> but uh, I, I want to talk about big fat fucks here in a minute. But uh, my wife and I, we were in New York, and uh, we got on the plane, and I think. You know how my wife is. She's, you know, she's she's always worried that she's going to be left behind, left behind, left behind, or right. delayed or something right. like that. So we're rushing, 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 and then we get on the plane. We sit down. We're in the plane. And she's like, "Okay, now I can relax. All right, everything, ever we're relaxed. Oh, we're, we're on the wrong plane, right?" No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I remember a time uh, leaving um, New York, flying back to uh, Florida. The two rows up, a big Jamuk guy, young Jamuk guy, you know, like, hey, you know, I'm going to, yeah. yeah, and, you know, muscle guy, and he had his, you know, hair gel in, and, and a couple, two seats. Yeah, well, a couple gold chains, muscle guy, big yeah, muscle yeah. guy, you know, that kind of Jamuk, excuse me, was there with his girlfriend, and he said something. He was talking to her, and he, you know, was, he was just being an ass. He was in the aisle, and he was like going, hey, um, hey, blah, blah, blah. And the stewardess came over and said, you need to turn your phone off. He's like, I'm, I'm getting ready to. I'm getting ready to. And he's, you know, texting her, doing whatever he's doing at the time. And she came back by. She's like, sir, I, I need you. He's like, I'm fucking trying to, I'm doing it. Just relax. We're still at the, you know, the gate. And she literally goes, sir, are we going to have a problem? And he, you know, put his arm on the back of his seat and the seat in front of him and bo- boosted himself up. It was like going, what do you mean we're we going to have a problem? You asked me to turn my phone off. I told you I was going to turn my phone off. And I'm like going, oh, God, here we go. Oh, here we're we going to have a problem. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. And that's a prime example. I don't know why you're so stressed out. Just relax, dude. Relax. Yeah. And this is. Was this before 9-11? Yes. This is after 9-11. Sorry, this is after 9-11. I'm trying to do my math here. Okay, we've been married this long. 9-11 is a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what happened there. Uh, so just relax, guys. Get on the plane. Relax. Sit down. Um, a group first. I don't care. Then B group. Then C group. Relax. Everybody's going to get a seat. Everyone's going to get a seat. They're making plane seats smaller. They're making the bathroom smaller. They're doing all that stuff. So just everyone relax. You're going to get there. And we can get there with the less stress. And we can just all enjoy the flight. Right. All right. right. You listen to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. Stick around. We'll be right back after this. Well, there you go. All right, now I'm getting the drift of it. Drift of what? Well, I mean, I'm, I can see what's going on. <laughs> I'm not leaving you out. No. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't even have to take the mower out this week. Well, that's too bad. Or is it? Well, I, I, you know, I kind of, I almost look forward to it because it gives me something to do. Yeah. 
you know, besides go out in the car and waste gas, and then if I go out somewhere, uh, inadvertently I spend money. Right. Yeah, you, you know? don't want to do that. No. I mean, I do enjoy spending money, but, uh, <laughs> you know, to, it, at a limited commodity. Far and few between. Uh, yeah, right. All right, let's uh, let's talk about so what the fuck is this? No, ask me later. All right, let's talk about some cool stuff. Let's talk about, and we're done with this. That can go away. Well, you mentioned the four things, or the three, the five things rather, mm -hmm. right at the top. Mm -hmm. So you probably want to hit those, right? I'm gonna hit um shark. Papa I'm gonna John. hit. I'm gonna hit Vannon, and then I'm gonna come in with the shark. Vannon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, actually, I'm going to talk about the sharks, and then we'll oh, talk. Oh, Vannon. Oh, okay. I see down there. Yeah, we're going to talk about the. We're going to talk about uh, sharks off of the coast, and then we're going to talk about Vannon. Search. As in Vannon White. <laughs> No. Oh boy. Um, let's see real track times. All sharks. What? Miss Costa. Notice how they follow the Gulf Stream. Well, hold on. Save it. Okay. Track shark. Okay, this is what we're going to talk about. Okay. Um, who's this? I don't want Vannon yet. I want Shark. Are you ready? Yep. Coming back. Welcome back. You're listening to Deacon Live. My name is the Deacon. Over to my far right hand side is Teacher Man. Who's loving life? We're loving life. You can see us on Twitch. You can see us on the YouTube channel. You can do all that stuff. Make sure you follow us, like us, share us, do all that stuff as well. And our social network uh, at the Profit Radio website. You can find all that stuff. And oh, by the way, I forgot um, our t shirts are in. Oh, fantastic. So we'll have to look at one next break. They they are they are awesome. Uh, they're do you know what the next level t shirt? I mean that this the company name is called Next Level. Now, the T-shirt that you have on there, that's just a regular run-of-the-mill jersey-type T-shirt. Right. And, I, and mine's kind of the same thing. Those next-level T-shirts, have you ever seen, like, afflicted shirts or the, they're almost like a real soft, smooth, almost... Are, are they like uh, a... Um what do they call it when uh, it, it it wicks the water away from no, the body? No, no, those not are those are dry those are dry wet dry or something vac. I don't know. No, it's not those. These are real soft, real. Plush, almost like a cashmere type shirt. They're real, real nice. Anyway, so oh, I can't wait. They're they're going for about twenty three dollars, depending on the size that you are, and it's only good till Tuesday. So okay, and okay. hopefully you listen to this. I'll podcast. throw a few in the car, in the truck. Well, the design, the, the design that you have right now, you can go and I'll go to the Profit Radio website, and the, there's a link for the T-shirt. Anyway, so it, it, that design's good till Tuesday, but there'll be other designs coming up later. So if you missed this one, don't, cool. wor don't worry. We got more designs coming up. So um, I just want to say um, you, it's summertime. It's hot out there. Man. And when, you, when it's hot out there and it's summertime and you're out of school, what do you do? You bother the neighbors. <laughs> well, At least that's what the kids around here do. Well, <laughs> some people like to go to the beach. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people like to go to the beach. Now, here in the California, or California, Carolina area, you have to be really careful because there is, is a great white shark out there off the Carolina coast. Now, are you familiar with O-Search? O-Search? So, oh, shits? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Um, now I'm, I'm familiar with OSHA, but no, I'm not. No, I'm not familiar right. with that. This is a website. It's it's O Search, and it's it's spelled O C E A R C H dot org. Basically, and, you can search stuff on the ocean. Well, yes, and what they do is they they only track great white sharks. Oh, okay. That's that's it. So when you punch that in, you can see every great white shark that that. That they've tagged and that they follow all uh -huh. out all on the ocean. Well, this one particular shark that's out there off the Carolina coast is uh, her name's uh, Miss Costa. Well, a great white shark is traveling north, hugging the coast of the Carolinas when suddenly veered off into deeper waters and then took a sharp U-turn earlier this month. 
This could mean something big, the researcher said. Uh, um, other female white shark sharks travel in a similar pattern, and they think they might know why. So if you go to OSEARCH, which is O-C-E-A-R-C-H dot org, you can track, um, if you're looking at the our video here, you can see I've got it up on my screen. You can see right here, this is Miss Costa. Dead middle of the Bermuda Triangle. Right, so she has actually made a turn, and she's heading back in. Why do you think she would go to deeper waters and then take a turn and head back to the coast? Um, it, it might be, female, uh, it, right? I was going to say it might be a mating th type of thing. She might be looking for a mate, or she might be getting ready to give birth. Uh, and they move to warmer waters, shallower waters, so that the so that the um, you know there's plenty of people in there where the babies can feed off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so bring your kids out there to the coast. So uh, wiggle their toes. <laughs> yeah, wiggle their toes, so uh, Miss Costa can have uh, some food for her little baby. But yeah, they they figure that, that she might be pregnant. So yeah. she's she's heading in, and uh, she's 12 foot long. She's I think they said they had her weighed at about 1,300 pounds. Uh, so that's a big white, sh a big great white shark. Yes. And uh, so she's she's making her way into the. She's probably I think they said about 150 miles off the Carolina coast. But I mean they they could do that in. Oh. I mean minutes. And they and they don't uh, they don't ever stop because no. they'll drown if they stop. No. Yes. I'm, no. 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 I, no. Listen. Look at me and look at my eyes. Okay. I'm dead serious. A shark, even when it sleeps, has to move. Because you notice how when you see when you see regular fish, you see the gills flapping? Yes. Well, sharks don't have gills that flap. Right. So in order for the water to flow over the gills so they can collect oxygen out of the water, mm -hmm. they have to keep moving. And their mouth is always open, slightly open. Right. So that the water can flow through the gills. Well, I was going to say, if, if, if they're sitting still, the current is always moving. So wouldn't they sleep like in a current, like they fall asleep and, and kind of drop anchor and let the... <laughs> let the I'm thinking boat terms, you know? Well, yeah, I, you know what I mean? It would make sense if they could find a strong enough current. Or a light that, enough a light enough or a slow enough current to where the, the resistance of their body will actually maintain their, their speed. Listen to us. We sound smart. I'm <laughs> but if the, the Well, they didn't get the name great for nothing. I mean, they're huge. They need a lot of oxygen. Right. So, I mean, they have to have a lot of water running over those gills. All right. So, there you go. You gotta run over the gills. <laughs> run over the <laughs> right. So what is your? We were looking at um, uh, 1970. By the way, they they bought that bug out from under my nose. By the way, if you listen to the past couple of podcasts, that the Volkswagen bug that we oh, looked at. Oh no, I haven't. I hadn't heard that. They 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 had it. They actually sold it. I don't know what they sold it for. They had a four thousand dollar price tag on it. It was seventy. Um, 1970 Volkswagen bug. It had a I think a seventeen six. Six, 1700. Yep, had a 1700 uh, cc engine in it, which is kind of beefy for a, a bug, but they sold it. And they had, a, like I said, a $4,000 price tag on it. I was scrolling through my Facebook. Yes, my Facebook. Oh, my, boy. My Facebook. Why is it playing? Oh. Not fast enough. I don't know. I'm not fast enough, I guess. I see it, but I don't hear it. Anyways. Oh, because I muted everything. Try this again. So, anyways, I was scrolling through my Facebook uh, feed, and I saw someone that was selling a 1965 Volkswagen Pearl White. Now, it said Pearl White, but it had a little body work that needed to be done I'm with sure, it. Yeah. The interior was fine. You know how much they wanted for that son of a bitch? And it had the California lean. It had the same, uh, the eight-spoke rims that are uh -huh. on it. You know how much they had that for? Tell me four thousand. No, more nine thousand dollars for that bug. Wow, nine thousand. I guess I missed some kind of influx of friggin' increases in Volkswagen bug prices. They they must be in demand. My dad had a fifty five. I wish I still had it. Yeah. Now one thing and something I wish I used to have. My growing up as a kid, my mom and dad had. Do you remember Tropic Travelers? Yeah. Yeah. What are they? Uh, they're um, um trail. Well, they're. Uh, things you can drive that you can live in too yeah but what kind of vehicle is it oh uh it's it's a van a customized van remember Artie grindle yeah and the tropic travel yeah. i want to sell you a van and those are like big in like the 80s and stuff oh yeah and, a matter of fact my son had a couple of them did he really yeah yes 
Yeah, he loved those things yeah. for some reason. <laughs> and boy, they emptied his wallet as quick as he could fill it. Why? Oh, gas. Oh man, they would eat gas. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> So I was scrolling through um, the Amazon uh, Kindle stick or whatever that we got, the fire stick, and, and the free stuff that we get. Yeah. And I came across this documentary. It's called, you ready for this? Uh, okay. It's called Vannon. Oh. Are, are, I, you, are you Vannon? Are you Vannon? Yes. So in other words, there's, a, there's an apostrophe at the end of the word. Yes, there is an apostrophe yes. at the end of the word, and it's called Vannon. And it's basically this, and I guess, I didn't know this, but there's a... It kind of like a like a, a bug expo where you, all the bu- Volkswagen bugs get together. Well, it's like a classic car type of deal where everybody gets their vans together. They open up the side doors, and I'm telling you what, some of those things are just too plush. Now, saying that they're a classic car event is putting these people on a higher pedestal than they actually <laughs> than, they, deserve, <laughs> than right. they actually are. Uh, yeah. I, okay. I mean, you've heard the whole thing about you know I live in a van down by the river. Right. When you watch this documentary, they third, third dumpster on the left. They literally these people look like they live in a van. I wouldn't doubt down it. Down by the road. Now, some of them are nice vans. They put a lot of money into them, and some of these people are just but here's here's a here's a clip of the show. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Now, okay. Now All hear. right. Hold on. I gotta start that over again. This difficult between screens. This. This. That's not yeah, that's a regular expo there. Um. Let's see. Different cult between screens. Oh, I got the wrong one on. Hold on. I can do that. Uh, I got so many things clicking. (laughs) Done. Bye-bye. I had the wrong... I've got the telephone lines on and not the thing on uh here we go let's try this again you're gonna have to listen to it again pretend like you never heard it before okay (laughs) here we go automotive hobby we're almost kind of a laughing stock it's like oh geez the damn vans you know but to us it's our life daughter could be in here. That was the big license plate frame and a sticker in the 70s. Now it's Don't Laugh Your Mother could be in here. Oh, we're in Elk Farm, Wisconsin at the Van Nationals. Uh, 40th Van Nationals. I'm here. This guy can barely talk. He looks like... Can you see him? He's hammered. <laughs> he's got He's got an, an old... Or he's smoked up. One he's, or the he's other. He's got a Hobie hat on, He no shirt, cut off jeans, and here he is. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and these guys, and these these are the. If you look at the on the screen here, these two guys, I don't understand their vest. It's their 40th anniversary for this van thing, and uh, these guys. I thought these guys were gay. Look at them. They're like gay lovers with their I, these vests on. They're like I don't get it. They're like balloons on one side and then yellow on the other side, but they're the not the sponsors, but the people that help get people where they need to be. The employees. There you go. That's oh, oh. A, yeah. So, so I don't know. I'm like a security. I really I enjoyed driving a van. Chevelle, a Mustang, a Corvette. All they got is a couple seats for their interior. You can't do in a car what you can do in a van. A lot of fashion, a <laughs> little lifestyle. I'll definitely say that. So. Van and me in my life. I love van. Yeah. Sitting at a table, drinking, that's Bannon. Sleeping on the floor, passing out in lawn chairs, picking up girls. I guess that's all Bannon. I don't know. I treat it like art. Everybody has their own flavor of art. When you own a His is all airbrushed up. You see all that one? Yeah. On the side, yeah. that's definitely Bannon. 
I mean, you always see the here the typical, you know, the the stoner pulls up and he's got the dragon with the Thor or whatever <laughs> on the side, and then you see this guy and he's just like Rrr. the only group in the entire automotive world that doesn't allow the public in. You see that the only group in the old automotive field that doesn't allow the public in. You have, you have to, to have, have a, a van. You have to have a van to this be part event, of it. If it was a car show for the public, would probably have ten thousand spectators. It's a private party. So that uh, changes that's everything. A, that's a glass of beer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you're talking mud pit, you're talking parties, you're talking... And I want to get to, there's a scene in here I want you to see, because they show some old footage of when they used to have, you know, 16,000 vans, and they used to have 20,000 vans that would show up. I want you to look at the video, if they show it, hopefully they'll show it on this thing. So okay. what happens inside the gate stays inside the gate. Con 69, hard rocking van driving love machine. Happy 40th! <laughs> Happy 40th! <laughs> this one's a, one look at this catch. <laughs> oh boy. You can't hot rod a van. You can't do much with that. And we're proving them wrong. But the bottom line is, I think we're all here for the same reason. So anyways, uh, they show... In the, in Why are they all so big? Well, that's <laughs> that's where I was going at. They showed some old, old 19... Because they this is the 40th anniversary. Uh, this actually past year, 19, uh, 19, listen, how old are 2017, this is their past year, uh-huh. 40 anniversary. So they actually showed 40 years ago in the 70s when they started doing this and all the vans were coming out, they had the old Dodge, you know, in the front and, the, and the, it, just all these beautiful vans. And they had some old film footage. And if you watch it, watch this documentary called Van and Everyone is this real skinny kid, and they're running around, and they're jumping in mud pits, and they're, you know, they're they're hanging out, and they're drinking, and all this stuff. And everyone, every single one of these people in the old school videos that they show throughout this documentary is skinny. I'm talking real skinny. Well, real. Here's what they grew up to be. Well, <laughs> yes, and here's where I'm getting at is, think about when like McDonald's and fast food and everything started coming into play as far as right. that that was your daily um meal you know you might have it once because you're out on the road you might have it they would barbecue there they would know, do, do their own thing they would cook their own food they would you know they would do all the stuff that you did at home they were raised to cook and do all this stuff at home now our lifestyles i mean look at these big fat bucks yeah they're they're just huge oh i think it's the beer too well the beer <laughs> every beer's always been around yeah. and 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 there are well, there's a combination of beer and, and everything that else that you eat on top of that. I mean, refined sugars, and I'm not going to get into all that. But, you know, these people are now... There's a whole, a whole different food group nowadays. It's a, they're, they're ingesting a whole different food group now. Food group now. And uh, when I come, when we're, we're going to take a quick little break, and when we come back, I'm, I've got some stats for you as far as America's tired of it. America is tired of being as big as we are. So stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Bravo Radio. I'll be right back. That was painful. (laughs) I'm like, why is it working? Oh, because I hit the wrong fucking... I'm hitting the wrong fucking thing on the air. Hmm. All right. So we did Shark. We did Bannon. We did the shark off the coast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wish they would have shown some of the the old school videos of them doing that, because they they showed like you know they were you know driving through mud and every one of the I mean even though they were in their twenties and whatnot they were they were I mean you could literally take your hand around every single one in those videos and, yeah. and put your hands around them. Well, I mean, even old videos. I mean, I say old videos, old pictures of you, you know, yeah. that I've seen. I mean, you were, you know. Well, I, I, I had, a, I had a V build. I mean, I was just, I was cut like right. nobody's business. But I worked at it too. Now everything from my chest fell down to my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we did the IHOP. That's gone. Um, where's my America? Mm-hmm. America weight loss. That's what I want. Okay, ready? Yep. I'm 
going to surprise you with this as well. Run to fat ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you saw the headline? Yeah, right. that's funny. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Welcome back. You're listening to Deacon Live. My name is the Deacon. Over to my far right hand side is Teacher Man. In his customized van. Customized van. Did you ever, you had a van? I know you said your I son had, had a van. I had several vans. Oh, really? Yep. What, what was your favorite? I had a um, a Ford. It was a Ford. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was. Uh, I don't think I'm on now. Yeah, you're on. Oh, I yeah. can't. I, I... You're uh, on. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we. There it is. Um, I don't think it was an Econoline, but it had windows all the way around it. Okay. Around. See now, I can't hear you. Well, I turned my mic off. That's why. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 oh. oh well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, it wasn't an economy. He's line. new to the show, folks, isn't had, he? It's my, look, my first day. Look at the big dumb bear walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, it had <laughs> what what I liked about it, you know, because some a lot of vans had a very very limited, uh, you know, um, uh, peripheral view where you can't see, you know, all the way around. Mm -hmm. And I loved that about this van because it was windows all the way around. Mm -hmm. They had shades on them that I could open and close. Right. But um, and it had a kick-ass stereo system in it. And did you yeah. have the did you have the thing where the the bed in the back would lay down? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> it, it, it was a couch. Yeah, and it then a, it opened up, pulled you out, pulled it up, and laid it down. Yep. Oh man, I, I if I had stories about how many times I had to. Um, Actually, clean out all the beer bottles for my dad driving that van around because <laughs> they'd all he put them down, they'd all roll in the back. <laughs> and then the back, you know, I'd open up the back of the van. My mom's like, All right, get all the beer bottles out for your dad. And I'd have to pull them all out. And, <laughs> Daddy likes the bottles, these are pretty. And I was, yeah. you know, I'm eight, nine years old, I don't understand what's going on, but that was the time. I mean, that's that's what was going well, on. Well, I mean, when we had pickup trucks when, when I was younger, anyway, mm -hmm. you know, we'd drink drink and drive and take the can and whoop out the window into the <laughs> truck into the bed truck bed right and you know after but they by the time the weekend came you right. had to get it uh, you know basically back up to the dumpster and dump your uh, rear end into the into the uh, trash can yeah trash can so uh, it's speaking of like trucks and all that stuff uh tractors <laughs> <laughs> so there was a gentleman he didn't have a van. He didn't have a truck. But he got mad at his neighbor and actually uh, chased him down with his his uh, tractor. Uh, headline reads: Florida man. Oh God, here we go. Oh, they all got tractors down yeah. there. Grass grows all year long. No, I'm talking about like. Farm tractor type. Oh, oh, so yeah. it was a fast son of a bitch. Yeah. Get over here, you bastard. Florida man, 72, tries to run, run, tries to mow down a neighbor with his tractor during a dispute, cop says. And I guess what was happening is uh, he, uh, he, like here, not here, but on the on the French. Yes. Uh, we have property property lines are kind of iffy around here. Uh -huh. I mean, some people put up a row of trees. Some people will say, "Okay, here's my fence." That's kind of where my property stops, and that's kind of unless you're actually doing land surveying and stuff. Everyone just kind of gets along and goes, "Okay, if you mow my side, that's fine." If you you know trim this side, that's fine. Just don't dig up my side. You know, don't right, don't right. destroy anything like that. But this guy, hold on, let's see if we can get this thing to work. So here we go. No, oh, the video you can play cannot be found. So the long of the short is the uh, 70 year old Florida man was arrested last month after he was caught on video chasing down his neighbor on a tractor during a dispute over the property. Police said, "St. John's County. Where's St. John's County at?" St. John's County is uh, up in St. Augustine. St. Augustine, yep. right? Uh, was charged with aggravated assault when a deadly with a deadly weapon without the intent to kill. So I guess I he guess he was just going to run him over. He was just going to run him over a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just chop one leg off. Right. And so hold on, because this is the, this is the clincher here. Uh, if you look at the screen here, authorities received the service call about 8 p.m. when officers arrived at the scene of Scott Lynch, 53, told him he was arguing with Morris, his neighbor, over property when the 17-year-old climbed into his tractor and chased him all, <laughs> chased him, and yelling, "Run, fat ass, run!" So you ready? <laughs> Giddy up. Here. Here's Mr. Morris. Oh my goodness! And can you describe him a little bit for me? Uh, well, he looks like uh, he's right out of the uh, Aryan Brothers Club. <laughs> right. Um, m might have a job, uh, you know, 
a second job doing Santa Claus around Christmas. Yeah, like a drunk Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Howell, Howell Lamar Morris was arrested and booked on June 19th and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without the intent to kill, which is very a weird charge in itself. I mean, are you going to run Madonna or not? Yeah, I mean, it, you're driving a tractor and stuff. So he told me he's like, run, fat ass, run. And America itself in general is running running and and moving and doing everything a lot better and studies have shown now that america actually we're losing weight we're tired of being labeled the fattest country in uh in the world we're tired of being called the lazy americans we're tired of being called the big fat americans because we have so much done for us and so much prepared for us. right it's it, uh, you know the, the fast food places have made life too easy yes and uh, that's what i was getting at with the old school video of um the, the Vannon, everyone was skinny because McDonald's and Burger King, they were just starting to start out, but that wasn't everyone's part of the regular diets. But now, right now, 49.1% of American adults uh, are battling to lose weight. And this is a, a poll that was taken between 2013 and 2016. I guess they just decided to write the article now. But according to the U.S. Centers of Disease, Disease Control and Prevention, those between the ages of 40 and 59 are doing the most huffing and puffing. So if you look at it, uh, 49, uh, 49 to 50, we're we're doing a lot here, and yeah, yeah. so the United States in general exercise, eating less, consuming more fruits and vegetables, and drinking more water than most. This most common. <laughs> Hold on, let me drink. Take a sip of my water. Loosen my <laughs> lips here. Hold on. Here we go. Cutting down on fatty foods. Yep, cutting down on fatty foods, and that's part of the. Um, you know, what's Burger King and McDonald's, they're getting away from that. They're getting away from the millennials. And I hate to say millennials. I keep saying that over and over again because I love them. I embrace them. But they are getting smart. They're, they're I don't want to say they're cooking food because they're not. No. But they're making better choices because better choices are out there. And that's what they want. They say, <laughs> you ready for this? Typical millennial attitude or my brain thought of a millennial attitude. Here, I want you to cook me food. Okay, here's a sloppy hamburger. I want you to cook me better food and make me better choices so I can go to your restaurant and establishment and buy better food because I don't know how to cook and I don't know how to do all that stuff in the stove I turn on and my mom it's won't let not, me. It's don't know how. It's too lazy. Too, well, no, they're not lazy. They, I don't think they've been... Too convenient, maybe. Well, convenience would be there. And I think because these people, those people, you people, are on the go all the time. Uh, for the most part, I mean, a lot of these kids are in school up until the age of like 21, 22, 23 years old, you know, going to college and going right. and all that stuff. Right. Thank God for that. You know, at least we're not the dumbest country anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but what they're doing is they're, they're making, they're trying to make better choices. And and restaurants and, and all these other locations and stuff are, are figuring that out. They're like going, this is what we need to do. So we need to make better choices. We need, we we can survive. We can do this. We can make a salad. I mean, McDonald's and Burger King, granted, the salads are 1,200 calories by the time you get the dressing and everything on right. it. But they, they, there's a demand for it. There's, I need good... Good and better choices. Good and better choices. And unfortunately, speaking of good and better choices, uh, a favorite branch of ours that we go to... I say branch. Uh, uh, establishment that we go to now and then. That no way we can get out of there for under five hundred dollars um, is losing one of their favorite menu items off their little snack area and stuff. Costco. Oh, that, I, 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 you're gonna break my heart. No, I, right. well, hold on. I'm not. I'm gonna let you down easy. All right. Costco is getting rid of or losing the Polish hot dog. Oh well, I, they can. You know what? I've never had a Polish hot dog at Costco. I get their regular. Now, if they were getting rid of their regular hot dogs, yeah. I'd be pissed off. They Actually, there's a fact that's out there that Costco itself sells more hot dogs than all the baseball uh, parks. parks, arenas, major miners, and all that put together. Wow. Can you wow. believe that? Wow, 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 wow. Those, wow. those Kirkland hot dogs that you buy up there for $1.50 with a soda... They sell more hot dogs on a yearly, annual basis than any baseball parks and all the baseball parks put together. The thing about it is, is, and, and you know, I live by myself. So, you know, I mean, when when we actually, we've gone to Costco together, yep. you and I. and, and uh, That's why I can't get out for 500 bucks. <laughs> well, you're right, right. But um, 
damn, I bought a package of those hot dogs, and I think they lasted me like six months. The whole, you know, the pack, the big. Oh, the big Kirkland pack, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to have one when I'm there. Right. Have to have one. But uh, I made the mistake. I, I would never buy another package again. I mean, maybe split it with with you guys or right. something. You know. But yeah, they're getting rid of and and Costco seeing the same thing. And let me and and people are like, oh, boo, you know, I'm, uh, Polish hot dogs. I want the Polish hot dogs and stuff. We'll go to Poland. Well, go to Poland. No, what what's happening is, and I found this out kind of like in a rude snippy way oh god here's a story you ready for the story here's a story i'm ready here's a story so costco is actually uh losing the polish hot dog to make room for better choices they're doing vegan hamburgers they're doing fruit salads they're doing better choices of things fruit in their little kiosk area or whatever the food court let's say call it a food cart all right I, i've never had a hamburger there uh, i mean irregular or otherwise i don't think they have uh, they well I, I take that back they might have a hamburger i know they have pizza and I, they I, have great pizza i'm not getting into that <laughs> but what they're trying to do is give something give someone else uh, a different group of people better options now here's why i think it's happening because my wife and i we were doing the Gluten free, the the whole thirty diet, the whole you can't have sugars, you can't have, you know, anything with the synthetic artificial sweeteners, artificial sweeteners, any kind of synthetic this and any kind of new, and we and it we were sitting at Publix. You would think Publix had would have a huge selection of it, which is great. They do. They have a they have a huge selection. When I say a huge selection of like meats and stuff. It, you know, it's very, very expensive. It's very expensive because they don't rely on that. That's not their bread and butter. They, their bread and butter is their produce, their bakery, and their boar's head. They make a lot of money on that stuff yes. there. So we were sitting there, and, you know, my wife's looking at every label and going, nope, can't have that. Nope, can't <laughs> have that. No, And we're looking at, like, the hot dogs and trying to get hot dogs or hamburgers or something that she can cook quickly. Um because she works late nights and stuff. Again, McDonald's Burger King is is the result of late night cooking and stuff. So she's you know pulling out, trying to eat better late night. You know she gets home late and you no, know, I can't have those hot dogs. Can't have those. I can't have this bacon. It's got you know brown sugar. I can't have this. I can't have that. Oh this one. Oh this one. And she would get so excited. She's like, look, I can have this one. I can have this one. <laughs> and we put it in the cart. And I'm like, oh, that's like twelve dollars for that <laughs> six hamburgers or something. She's like, no, 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 it's good. And then. In the process of that, and we, I guess, ourselves between the two of us, you know, uh, immune to the world, someone saw the commotion between us and realized Yoga Mom, she's uh. she's she's in Publix, she's got the jogger shorts. Uh oh, spandex pants. No, no, oh, no, not okay. spandex. The jogger shorts that are kind of like oh, uh, balloony. Ten- yeah, tennis shorts. Yeah, a little balloony, and then uh, she's got a little tank top on, and she's like. And she, you know, bounces from our left and then bounces to the right because we're standing in front of the organic section. And she goes, uh, excuse me, I just want you to know uh, Costco's got a great selection on all this, you know, vegan and all this. And I just, you know, I just come here to grab a couple little things, you know, to get me through the week. But I do most of my shopping at Costco. They've got a huge selection of all this stuff for the Whole30. And so, Are you on the Whole30? Right. I love the Whole30. And she's going on and on. I, I know the, the, the membership's, you know, expensive and stuff, but it's paid for in the long run. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I'm like going, but... You know, now that I'm thinking about it, here, you know, a year later, uh, they're pulling the Polish hot dog and they're putting in all this, this more better, more better, mo better, <laughs> more better food for you because there's this huge demand that they're, they're realizing in their actual sales floor. A whole new market. A whole new market of all this organic, grain fed, no sugars, no artificial sweeteners, anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, well, even most of the, not most of the sodas, but uh, the the main or the the larger uh, soda companies have gone back to cane sugar. Yes, uh, rather than uh, high fructose corn syrup, because it, it, it's a little more expensive, but it's a lot more natural. And if you're gonna put something in your body, but uh, you know, good or good or bad, make it natural. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, get it from the earth. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what they're doing there and at Costco. So th- I think that they're seeing that their sales get higher on this end of whatever organic products that they're selling. They said, let's let the, our, our, our food court reflect that a little bit more. So understand, people, Polish hot dogs, I know you want to buy them at, at Costco. I think they're um, – people were even saying, you know, bump it up a dollar. We'll buy it, you know, at the food court for another dollar. 
Look, you're not there to buy a meal. You're just there to get a snack. Right. So if you want those Polish hot dogs and you're so die hard on it, you know, what, turn turn your buy ass, a package yeah, of them. <laughs> turn your ass around and walk back into the store and add that to your five hundred dollar uh, paycheck or not your paycheck, your your bill at the end. <laughs> uh, do you, you know what? There's a uh, a new a big huge upswing on um, I guess what pe- it's been around forever, but what people are now using or, or saying is a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not not a health food, but but like what we, they used to call kale, the the wonder vegetable. Well, this is a wonder drink, coconut water. Oh, and th- well, I'm glad you said coconut water because when we come back from the break, I'm going to tell you the top five things that you think you drink or drink or eating healthy that heart doctors will not touch. They will not touch these products, and I believe coconut water is on it. So, really? I believe so. I have to go read the article okay. w- during this break. So you're listening to Nika Lie right here on <laughs> Bravo Radio. Well, so, where I read the article I read, they didn't know what they're talking about then. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back after this. Perfect. Good transition. It's actually pretty cool up here today. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of work on the, uh, the, the staircase coming up. The insulation's up, and I put the, the, I don't know what you want to call it, but I put the wood up there. Uh-huh. So that... Oh, you used the, the rolled insulation, you put that up? Yeah, but I had to um, put the, um, I had to put um, stringers, and then put the plywood and, and screw into the stringers to kind of, um, instead of sheetrock, right. using the fleck board to, to right, hide right. the insulation. Run, fat ass, run. Boop, 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 boop. Menu item going, bye-bye. All right. So that's done. Bye-bye. Mm, bye-bye. What's this? Weight loss in America? Delete. If I'm down that way this week, I'm going to... I think I'm going to try one of those quarter pounders. Fresh, right. fresh cooked. Mm-hmm. If I think of it, from where? McDonald's. They they oh, they, yeah. don't, they don't cook those until you order it. Yeah. Yeah, you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on! <laughs> don't cook! Don't finish cooking it yet. Uh, I got two guys. Oh, fucking Doctor Oz! Shove it up your dick. Oh boy. All right, here we go. You know the first the first time I pronounced that uh, he's the father of medicine, the Greek. Who? Uh, the, the the guy's name there, the very first word. I I was reading it in a, uh, the, the not the geography teacher, the history teacher, mm-hmm. world history teacher asked me to read. And that guy's name was in the paragraph and I called him Hippocrates. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hippocrates. Instead of Hippocrates. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah. Hippocrates. I think Bill and Ted said the same thing when they picked up so- Socrates. Okay. Oh, Socrates. Oh, yeah.
how do you feel about hitting a thousand? Oh, I, it's fantastic. But don't say anything about it yet. Oh, I no, no, no. A, I want to do one. I, I would have only talked about it off, uh, you know. Yeah, I want to do a release off, with off the there. stickers and stuff. I want to appreciate yeah. everyone that dropped yep. anything. Um, I want to talk about, ooh, stats real quick, stats. And then we're going to talk about numbers, and then we're going to come to... Uh, bye bye, Polish dog. Weight loss on you, thing. Jason, that tractor. Okay. Still alive. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta fix your camera. I was hoping my other camera should be in soon. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And I don't know, I think I wanna put this, not now, but up here somewhere. Uh huh. I don't know. I do not know, but that's where it's going right now. Out of my way. Okay, you ready? Yep. Welcome back. You're listening to Deacon Live. My name is the Deacon. Over to my far right hand side is Teacher Man. Yes, yes, sir. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you for listening. We're not done yet. Don't worry. That's not our sign off. I know normally it is, but it's not our sign off. I, I want to do a special thanks to everyone that has downloaded our our podcast and listened to um, our 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 podcast on all the different levels and stuff. And remember last week, Teacher Man, we were talking about uh, Georgia. Like as soon as we post it up. Uh, Georgia was downloading. Georgia's the first. Uh, they were first one downloading it, downloading it, and they, they numbers were crazy. I see all the numbers on a daily basis. I check them every every day actually, and uh, I just want to say, Georgia, you're you're always on my mind. <laughs> but unfortunately, you're a peach. There's a new uh oh king of listening to Deacon Live. Uh oh. And it, it comes out of nowhere. I mean, literally out of nowhere. The first week of July. Nowhere to be seen. Georgia was right there, number one, number one, number one. With believe it or not, California, uh, Maryland, and Florida. <laughs> you know, huh. but out of nowhere, in the last week, New Jersey has taken over the number one spot as far as downloads and whatnot here at Deacon Live. I mean, in the last week, that's great. And they, that's great. And and Georgia, appreciate it. But actually, New Jersey uh, downloaded. Twice as many times as, <laughs> oh. yeah. I mean, they they showed up and they they hit they aimed for the fence and they hit it. Wow, over the fence, over the fence. And it's, so numbers and stuff we were talking about, and I want to talk about the eight things that doctors, heart doctors, won't touch, and that you think are healthy. You think they're healthy, but they will not touch. So we were talking about everyone getting fat and everyone getting, you know, the hot dogs are gone. Oh, not the hot dogs. Oh, oh, God, hold on. Not the hot dogs. The Polish hot dogs are gone off the Costco menu at their food court, and they're bringing in more um, healthy stuff for them and, and free-range this and, you know, non-sugar this and all that bullshit. Anyway. So your sausage, sausage will run to the grill instead of the... <laughs> right, run, <laughs> run, chop themselves up, and put them right... Free-range right. sausage. So, um... <laughs> What would you say? Hippocrates? What's his name? His name is actually Hippocrates. Okay. Father of medicine. All right. So he famously said, let food be thy medicine. So that applies to your heart health and stuff. So uh, Dr. Andrew Friedman, director of the Cardiovascular Prevention and Wellness in the National Jewish Hay in uh, Denver, Colorado, a number of, Jesus Christ, can they get this paragraph any longer as far as what he does? Anyway, some Jew... Oh, hold Whoa. on. Hold on. Sorry. I apologize. I apologize. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to erase that. <laughs> <laughs> Better remember to. <laughs> oh, I will. So, if if you go to parts of the world where they haven't even been exposed to Western lifestyle, meaning the sedentary lifestyle of eating processed foods, heart disease is very, very limited existence. Is what the doctor says. Still, there's a possibility to eliminate uh, problems with food. Moderately proportion is always uh, a, c a control key. So what they're saying is here today. <laughs> don't look at that. Don't look at the title. Today, um, 
Hold on. Today, the article says they asked Freeman and Hayes to share some of the top foods to try avoid and limit for op- or limited for optimum health. Here are eight of them that they found out that these two doctors from Denver, Colorado University. You ready? And it's, well, this is the first thing you always know. This bacon and, or bacon sausage and other processed meats. We'll get into that here. I, yeah. I'm going to go through these real quick. Potato chips, of course. Processed foods, desserts. Get away from that. Too much protein. They actually say that we as Americans or we as a country are eating too much protein. You can actually ruin your liver. That's what they say, that it, it, extra protein often comes on high meats and saturated fats. It raises the LDL levels and cholesterol and blah, blah, blah and stuff. And it, it don't overdo it and opt for plant protein outside of regular protein. All right, fast food, of course, energy drinks, we know that. And I, I'm reading this article because... Teacher Man brought up something earlier. I want to show them right here. Right here, if you're watching this on the uh, the Twitch Live or the YouTube Live, right here, what's it say? Coconut oil. Oil, it does. You know what? And I thought it was coconut water, but it actually is coconut oil. I knew there was coconut in there somewhere. So it says it has more saturated fats than lard. Um, you, and used in some studies that introduced the sludge with the pipes, <laughs> if you will. Uh, and other rats and stuff. So he noted it works great typically for moisturizing your hair and stuff, but I would not eat too much of it. So coconut oil, not coconut water, so I apologize for that. Coconut water. Coconut water is good. Yes, coconut water is good. Um, I I try because I'm on, you know what I'm doing now? I'm buying, because uh, I'm getting away from my crystal light, and you guys know this. You've been listening to the podcast for a while, especially you people in New Jersey. Um, I've been doing a, taking a slice of, taking a full lemon, slicing it. I found my old school little, hand, not hand crank juicer, but where you just put the wedge on it and kind of, uh-huh. and, and twist it around. It collects the juice in the bottom, and then I put it in my water, and I'm done. That's what I drink all day long. Lemon water. Lemon Lemon water, yep. Well, that's good. So, and uh, we were talking about trying to get stuff fast and, you know, eating better and being healthy and stuff. There's actually an app that's out there. Like, let's say you get in your refrigerator. If you look at your refrigerator right now and you open it up and you go, oh, what, what am I going to eat for dinner? What am I going to eat? And you look and you got, um, you got a jar of pickles. You got some, a package of cheese. Uh, you've got something else. Um, what else you got? Some celery. I might make a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, there's an app that actually um, lets you program. Like if you have the app, when you put plug it in your phone, what's in your refrigerator? It actually spits out a meal for you that you can actually do. And it's uh, one of the most frustrating things about planning the last minute meal is the most impossible f- to find a recipe online that actually includes all the things you already have in your kitchen. Dial 1 800 Domino's. No, <laughs> you can't do that. You can get too fat. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to get away from. You know, we're trying to work out. America's trying to work out and be better fit. And 49% of us, and you're part of that 49%. Uh, uh, that's right. Fortunately, there's, there's a, an app called Supercook. And what it, it's super cooked. You put it on your phone, and then basically what you do is you type in. Uh, so here's how you get started. There's two ways to fast track your dinner: searching for ingredients. If you want to search ingredients, you know you you type in the ingredients that you have, and then it'll start spitting out recipes and stuff for you. So and see, searching recipes. You can also search for a specific recipe if you have an idea of what you want. So let's say you're like, I want like a chicken parmesan or not a chicken parmesan. Let's say I can make a mushroom vegetini salad. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, what I fall back on a lot too is uh, eggs. I mix a lot of a lot of veggies with eggs. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that that satisfies me too. Do you have any like cream or any sauce or any kind of thing you put over it? Nope. Nope. I just... Um, Sometimes I try. Your doctor told me to cut cut back on the salt. Okay. Uh, he said, you know, at my age, I don't need to be adding salt to food. You know, we were sitting around uh, on the French and stuff, and now that we're we're our crops are coming in, and we've got like zucchini and cucumbers and and squash and corn and and tomatoes are getting ready to come in, and our uh, our spaghetti squash are, are getting ready, nice and plump. I said to my wife, I said, you know what, what what can we make out of this stuff? Because normally the stuff we put it out on our produce stand. So I said, let's make zucchini bread. And she makes an awesome zucchini bread. Uh, mine was gone in two days. Was it? Oh, man. She, I think she made three more loaves the other day. Um, I said, you know, we have corn. We have all this corn. Let's make some cornbread, some homemade cornbread. You know what's good, too, is corn fritters. 
corn fritters. But, but the, the, that you have to deep fry. Oh, well, that's kind of shooting the horse in the foot because it's smiling at you. Well, <laughs> well if you, uh, you know, if you use uh, canola oil or uh, uh, olive oil, it's not that bad. Okay, so corn fritters, but I, I want to do a cornbread, and we had a cornbread at a, a restaurant called 310 Maine over in the Huntersville area, which it actually tasted like a dessert. Like, you would think zucchini bread would be a zucchini bread that you would have for breakfast or toast. Do you know, though, cornbread has an awful lot of sugar? Does it really? Yes. Do you add sugar to it, or is no. just because of the way if, you... Even if you even if you buy cornbread like the... Uh, Mr. Handy Andy Dandy, right? D- and Dandy Boy right. cornbread mix. Yeah. Look at the ingredients. Uh huh. Loaded with sugar. But where does the sugar come from? Well, uh, if you're making your own cornbread, you'll have to add it. What is it? White sugar, gra- or is uh, it? It's, it's added sugar. It's sugar mixed with the flour. It doesn't come from the. It's in other words, it, it's not just flour made from corn. Okay. There's sugar added to the mix. So you're saying this is. Make- this is bad for me. This is bad for you. Well, we had, uh, back to my 310 Maine, we had, it was on the dessert menu, yeah. what was a cornbread in a small six-inch cast iron skillet. They brought it out to you, and I'm like going, and the couple we were with, I was like going, why are you eating cornbread for dessert? And uh, she's like, well, here, take take a section of it. And so I took it, and it was like eating cake. like like a sweet, sweet cake. So maybe I'll tell her not to make those because she hasn't made them yet. Well, what about zucchini bread? Zuc- it, shit's got a lot. Shit, got a. Shit's got a lot of z- <laughs> zep to it. It's got cinnamon and whatnot in it. Is it the those same? Cinnamon is very good for you. Right, but cinnamon is very good for your cholesterol. Very good for your heart. Um, it raises your be- good cholesterol, lowers your bad cholesterol. And it's it's excellent for diabetes too. But what about the... It's sweet, though. Cinnamon's not sweet. No, the zucchini bread that she makes. Have you seen her recipe? No, I haven't. So is it... As, well, I, I mean, I know it's I know it's sweet, so I know she's adding either sugar or a sugar substitute. We might have to stop that. We might have to just sell that at the farmer's market instead of just eating oh, three, three or God. four loaves here. <laughs> That's... I mean, I could, eat, I could sit down and eat two loaves watching TV. I told her uh, the other day, I said, you know, make it like a carrot cake, and uh, here was the joke. Here was the joke. You ready for this? And we'll skip on to something. Else. Um, I said, make it like a carrot cake and do your cream cheese frosting on the top of it. Oh, damn. And, yeah. I know, I know. That's, That's just what we need. Right, exactly. <laughs> but here's the thing. So you ever see? You ever bought a carrot cake at the store? Oh yes. And then what has it got on top of it? Cream cheese icing. And what else? Uh, well, oh. there, there's something a little on top of it to let you know it's a oh, carrot, the carrot cake. The carrot. And it all it is is a pipe. Piped, piped, ice, pi- piped orange icing and piped green icing. So I said to her, I said, make a zucchini bread cake. And I said, do the cream cheese frosting. And I said, put a little squiggly green on it. And she's like, yeah, and I can put a little squirt of yellow for the flour. For the- <laughs> I said, there you go, millions. Oh, it's millions. A, it's amazing what two brains can do together. Oh, God. Well, hers <laughs> is a full one. Mine's you know, kind of out there. So. Oh, goodness. Oh, so... <laughs> <laughs> So that's the dinner wrap called Super Cook. Uh, so, well, there so, you go. Yeah, make sure you sign up for that, and you can uh, help with your dinner plans and whatnot. If you could just type in all the stuff that you have in your refrigerator, or you know, start with a main ingredient like a protein and type that in. See, I want somebody to come over, go in the fridge, see what I got, and cook it for me. <laughs> no, you don't want that. Yeah. You end up like the guys that that are complaining now about not I'll having. I'll be out and run in front of the tractor, running my fat <laughs> ass off. Right. <laughs> uh, you also the Deacon Live. Stick around. We're going to talk about. Um, let's see, what are we going to talk about? You know what? I'm going to talk about some bad words and some good food and bad words. How about that? You sound like George Collins. Yeah, I know. Let's stick around. <laughs> oh, hold on. Ah, damn it. Hold on. Blow it out your ass! Blow it out your ass! Blow it out your ass! You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. Stick around. I'll be right back. Shit, it's 20 at the 5 already? Yep. Uh. 
Doing all right? Yeah. Yeah? I'm just uh, daydreaming. Today. What are you daydreaming about? I, no, I wasn't. I actually wasn't thinking about anything. I was just... <laughs> I think, I think there's a comedian that actually says, you know, when your woman looks at you and go, well, what are you thinking about? And you literally say, I'm not thinking of anything. They don't believe you. No. We as males literally can go, I'm not thinking of anything. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can actually try and not right. think about something or anything. All right. It's a gift we have. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you want, just stick them up here. Just out of the, just out of the way. Not like that, you freaking ding dong. Put the head thing back a little bit. There you go. You just keep him up there a little bit if you want. Oh yeah, I could hear. I'm not gonna do it, but <laughs> no, I'm gonna put it back. Because I don't want to look like a retard. <laughs> I, I can't help it. What the hell am I sitting? Am I sitting on? Oh. You roll on it? No. You ready? Yep. All right. All righty, ninety. We're gonna talk about Papa John's uh, Academy Sports. And then I'll I'll make up something. <clears throat> All right, ready? Yeah. Hey guys, it's <laughs> welcome back to Deacon Live right here on Proper. Hey guys, how are you? Whoa! <laughs> I know. I came back. I was in mid sentence. I was talking about something else with Teacher Man over there, and I'm like, "Holy shit, we're coming back from the break!" So I was like, "Hey, we're back on." That was a hell of a comeback. That was a comeback. <laughs> uh, you're listening to uh, Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. Give us a call at the station at 407-448-8800 or text us live at any time in the Queen City studio located in downtown Charlotte, North Carolina at 407-448-8800. Don't forget our t-shirts are in. The link's on the Proper Radio website. And while you're there, go ahead and click the Be Heard section and you can send us a, uh, a message right here to the station. We get it on the air. We'll play it next week on next week's podcast. And you can be part of the whole show. Yeah. And while you're watching the, the, the Twitch Live and or the Twitch feed and stuff and the and the YouTube Live, you can see all the stuff that goes on right here behind the scenes. And how much fun we really have. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> it's so boring. Yeah. Oh, So... Uh, earlier, and I want to apologize for this. I, it, I didn't mean for this to come out, and I apologize. But this is how uh, I got to word this correctly. This is how easy it is to say something in a certain aspect in the conversation that you're having and be taken, not taken the wrong way, but the intention was the point that you were trying to make. Does that make sense? Yes, so okay. far. Okay, so far. Now, what I'm talking about is, I'm referring to Mr. Papa John's. Okay. Okay. John Schmatter. Yes, that's his name. He was in a, a sales meeting with his media crew or his advertising crew and whatnot. And I don't know if you guys have rewind a little bit uh, back further... He said something about the NFL, and because of kneeling on the, you know, during the Star Spangled Banner and the, and the, all that stuff, that everyone's protesting, you know, all that, all this because of Trump or whatever you want to fucking think about. It, it's all a bunch of cock and bulls, anyways. Right. So he said, because of the NFL and the problems that they're having, and they're not dealing with it correctly, I don't know how you deal with just freedom of speech and whatnot, but he said, my sales have gone down. Okay? Papa John's... Because of the people kneeling? Because he is a main sponsor of all... Right. NFL, uh, Major League Baseball has dropped him because of this situation that's happened. Uh-huh. All right? And just recently, in the past week. So he's saying that the NFL, because NFL really hasn't... A, address the issue of kneeling for the the Pledge of Allegiance or kneeling for the National Anthem and stuff, that people are going, well, if the NFL is not going to do anything and Papa John's is sponsoring the NFL, guess what? I'm not going to. 
I'm not going to order Papa John's. I don't care how how many times you give those pizzas for seven dollars with key code. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. Ju- July. Just 7. type in B A R F. Right. Boss. So. So what happened? He was in a meeting. This is in the middle of May. He was in a meeting, and and you've seen these meetings where. You know, the guy's standing at the head of the table, and he's probably got four or five guys around him, and they got that little uh, spaceship thing in the center, you know, because he's talking. You ever seen the, the yeah, conference yeah, thing? The conference phones. Yep, conference, big phone in the center, and he's talking to uh, a couple of his um, constituents. Constituents? Probably franchisees. No, no, no. no. He, oh, okay. he was talking to his um, the advertising agency that he works with. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. So, he said, and and, the, and this is a lot of hearsay because there's no recording of it. This is hearsay based on a what they call in the, in the article a reputable source. Okay. This guy said, "Hey, I'm not lying. This Papa John said this, this, and this." Now, what he actually said was, he was talking about the the the, the backlash that he's getting with. Um, saying that he's, you know, the NFL is hurting his business. Yeah, but meanwhile, he's got guys like uh, Peyton Manning on there doing commercials with him. He's got eight or nine stores. Not, not anymore. Oh no. He, no well, he's he's not he's not doing the commercials anymore. But he pa- still has the franchise. He does have the franchises because each store does about a million two a year, and he's okay with eighteen stores doing a million two a year. Sure, that's like having a retirement fund. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just like it, and not having to play football ever. <laughs> so he said in this meeting, and I'm 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 walking on this very gingerly with steel-toed boots because that's the way this conversation needs to be. He said, you know, the words that I said about the NFL um, hurting my business is the same aspect as when Colonel Sanders, the owner of KFC at the time in the '50s, said. The ends are buying our chicken. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh. Now that was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can see where he'd have to walk out of the room. He. That's and and uh, give me one second. I'm gonna pull up the article because this is what he actually said. I'm gonna pull it up. What did you say his name was? John Schmatter. Okay. Uh, the founder of the chairman. Schnatter. 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 Not Schnatter. Yep. Uh, founder of the pizza chain. Uh, Papa John's, John Schneider, found himself in hot water using the N-word during a conference call in May. He commented um, during a call between Papa John's executive marketing agency, and the name of the agency is called Laundry Service, earlier on Wednesday. A source with knowledge of this, and they put in quotes, knowledge of this event. So the the call was reportedly set up for an effort to prevent any further press frenzies, particularly after Schmidt or the Papa John ignited a backlash in November 2007, saying that the NFL failures um, to resolve the players' national anthem protest has hurt his business and the shareholders. So that's what he said. That's what he was there to do the meeting for. That was his his, um, what he was trying to prevent. So he said... After asking him how he could distance himself from this racist group of rally support, <laughs> rallied in the support of him online, he complained that Colonel Sanders' KFC fame never got public backlash for his remarks. Here's the actual quote. Colonel Sanders called blacks ends and said... <laughs> Colonel, <laughs> Colonel Sanders called black blacks ends, according to Forbes. That's what he said. Um... Why do I have this thing on my screen? Go away. Um, Then he said he reportedly talked about about his life in Indiana, saying that people used to drag African Americans from trucks until they died. So apparently, this means that the what does that have to do with making pizza? It's well, it says that it meant to show his empathy towards racism. So I don't know. I mean, uh, I think you want to change that word. It's uh, change. It's. Show his antipathy. Oh, antipathy! Because he, Sorry, because he doesn't empathize with it. He, he he's the opposite. Right. So he was basically saying, you know, Colonel Sanders, who who's made a legacy, you know, the KFC and whatnot. He has made a legacy on selling his chicken, but he also called blacks the 
the N word and never got any backlash for it. But he has to understand that there is a there is a time. There was a time back in the fifties where you heard people use that word all the time. I mean, I I remember fifties fifties forties thirties. Yeah, and yeah. and and if you're born in the twenties, in the fifties, you're you're how old are you? Thirty something. Right. And then in the forties, you know. So. And, and and even during the war, um, if if a, a black person joined a black guy joined the navy, he was a cook. Yeah. So I'm just saying that you know he has to understand. Comparing Colonel Sanders saying that in the in the early days and what he said today is totally different. There, there is no comparison. There is no comparison. So, anyways, he is he has stepped down, and by all means, he should. I mean, I, yeah. I think he that was a one-two punch. He said, you know, the NFL um, is not doing anything about the protests, and then Colonel Sanders said this, and why why can't I get away with that? Is basically his his outlook. Why can't I get away with it? Well, unfortunately, it's not the fifties. Exactly. <laughs> unfortunately, Mr. Papa John's. As much as I love your pizza, now I'm not gonna. And I'm not going to protest his pizza because I like his pizza. But as long as you're not the face or the head or any kind of uh, relation to the company anymore, he actually stepped down. And the Yankees bounced his ass too. Yeah, and he's gone. And uh, the um, National Baseball League has 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 injected him, or injected him, injected him and rejected him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's gone. So uh, he's not the face anymore. He has no control, no power anymore. I'm sure he's got you know stock purchases up up the wazoo, but yeah. um, unfortunately he is. Uh, I don't see how they can even keep the name Papa John. Well, because that that face is his face is. What is the face of Papa John's? Well, and when you say Papa John's, you automatically think of him. Well, when he stepped down, let me little insider trading here. When he stepped down, he stepped down on Wednesday, Thursday morning. Papa John's stock jumped twenty two percent. Well, they figure they're doing something right, so I'm going to get on board while I can, because I'm sure the stock dropped as a result of losing. Uh, um, um, you know, I'll, I'll baseball t- and I'll tell football. you how much it is right now. Give me one sec. Let me pull them. I got my little app here, my stock traders. Okay. That I do on a daily basis. Uh, buy me about a hundred shares. Okay. While you're- Let's go. Hold on. Let's go. Oh, there we go. Put my little passcode in. And it is actually actually it's down. Mm, it's at fifty three dollars. It's down twelve cents. Twelve cents. Twelve cents. That's all it sounds. Not bad. Not, Not bad. bad. And that will ri- That will go back up. Oh God, yeah, God, yeah. It's at fifty three forty four, and it uh, dropped twelve cents throughout the day. It started at whatever, and, you know. Of course, how stock works, and at the end of the day, at closing today, it only dropped, lost twelve cents. But that'll, Got come, it. that'll come back around. That'll, I'm sure it will. Something will happen there. So yeah, Papa John said a bad word on the conference call. Um, but think think about how many times just in in your professional business because you've had you've had uh, your own companies, you've had a you've had a ta- bait and tackle store, you had a restaurant and stuff. I'm sure just in it just in passing, we've said you know fucking bitch, you know effing whore. Or, I'm sorry, I'm not picking all all the women. Effing dickhead, you know this guy this and this yeah. guy this, and we've we probably said. Not racial slurs, but just derogatory remarks. Off- offensive ab- terms. To, about someone directly either to their face, behind their back, or those people that are out there in, you know, for your, like your restaurant. You know, what the F do they know about food if they're right. complaining about it? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we've all said it before. Unfortunately. Not n- me. The customer's always right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, he, uh. he, I mean, we use these terms behind closed doors. We all use these terms behind closed doors. So... Some terms, though, uh, some things are just off base. I mean, they're just you're not. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. When you're in the in your now behind his closed doors, mm-hmm. I don't see. I don't consider that closed doors because that that was a meeting and that was being broadcast. I mean, you see him sitting there with his headphones on and and whatever he's saying is going into that mic. No, no, no. That that this is just a generic picture of him. Oh, okay. He was at a, he was at a, a conference call meeting. So he's probably in his, you know, his Bahama Bahama Mama shirt and, and whatever shorts and he's sitting at this table. Like I said, it's a big conference table. It's got the the thing in the middle. He didn't say this on air. He said this in a a conference room, a private um 
contain. He was in an office, his office, his office with three other guys talking to six other guys on the other end of the phone line. And he said these terms. I guarantee you, this is not. He someone just came out and just said that this is what he said. And we and I hate to say it. Okay, devil's advocate here. He did not say it that those people, those ends. He did not say that. Okay. okay. He said that Colonel Sanders said called blacks. He, he got away with it. No, not. <laughs> you're, you're missing what I'm saying here. Okay. He's saying that that Colonel Sanders called the blacks ends. Okay. Yes. That's like saying, well, Hitler called the 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 Jewish people Jews. Oh, Jews, kikes. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying that personally. Right. I am not saying that personally. He is saying that this gentleman called these people this name. He's not physically... I don't want to say he's owning the name because you hate to say that you own the name. But if you come up and you say you are a blank, right? you own that, whatever that term is, whether you know derogatory or not. If you say you personally, you are a blank. You own that. What he's saying is this man called this group of people this w- word. this word and there was no backlash so did he say a bad word uh, well i mean what was his point his po- it, it, his it, his point was he said the nfl okay all right refused to do anything about the guys Kneeling for the national anthem, and they happened to be all black guys. Bla- black, or, there was black and white during the time. Well, how did the N word get in there then? <laughs> what I just said was, he said Colonel Sanders I, back back in the day said the blacks were ends. Right. He's saying, in his words, the NFL has not done anything to these people, not not standing for the pledge of allegiance or the national anthem. So he physically ha- is not owning that word. Granted, he said the word, but what he's saying is he's repeating something that was done in history. For example, again, back to my thing, Hitler called the, the Jewish people Jew kikes or whatever you want to call them. Right. He's saying that Colonel Sanders called, called the, these people, people. The, this word. Right. Okay. So he did not, like, um, again... He didn't use the word. He did not use the word as a derogatory term. What he's saying is he's repeating what happened in history. Okay, I I understand what you're saying, but I don't understand... I I don't know what the context is that he brought it up in. He's br- he's bringing it up because he's like, Hey, the, the owner of this fast food franchise... Said these people were this, and there was no backlash. He didn't and there was no backlash okay. for that guy in, so, in the fifties. So 50s. why am I getting it? Why is he getting it for saying not? He didn't say anything bad. He's like so. On, so I say the NFL is ruining my pizza joint because they're not disciplining the people not standing for the Pledge of Allegiance or the the national anthem. National anthem, right? That's what he's saying. He's comparing on a broader scale, though. He's right. saying, you know, I'm losing business. Because your business is not taking care of these people that are not standing for the pledge or the national anthem. Sorry, I keep saying that. Let me pose this question to okay, you. Okay, please. Um, should I punish a Jehovah's Witness in my class when he doesn't stand for the pledge you in can't, the morning? You can't. Well, I, what, what's the difference? What what can the NFL do for for these guys that are kneeling during the? Uh... That's a that's a whole different that's a whole different topic that's a whole different story. What I'm saying, well, I think it offends the veterans. You know, that's and, and the people that fought. For and the I, I agree with you the most. What I'm not dealing with, I'm not talking about the actual act of them kneeling because they have they have whatever uh, freedom of speech and whatnot. What he's saying, Papa John's is saying, my business is failing. Because, because the, the NFL is not doing anything or addressing this situation. Good or bad, up or down, it doesn't matter. They're not dealing with it. They're pushing it under the rug. They're sticking it in the corner. They're closing the door. They're like, that doesn't exist. And that's what he's saying. He's saying that the NFL is not doing 
like I said, good or bad. So what <clears throat> what he is saying is that if they did something good or bad, they're doing something. Th- they're doing something, and that and that would affect his business positively. It doesn't matter because the way the the United States, the way the 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 general consensus is, NFL's not doing anything good or bad. Papa John's part of the NFL, good or bad. Face of. Face of, and that's it. Got it. So did he say a bad word? I mean, outside of the actual word itself is ugly. Ugly in general. It, it should never be word used. I, I, and I hate it when, when they... When they... Listen to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hate when the public uses it with each other. Right. I really do. Right. But um, did he say a bad word? He. I don't want to say he was using that word or that, that phrase as an example. I want to say no. But I, I want to say also, too, that you have to watch the... Uh, the the not what the, the format is what I'm looking at your your forum mm-hmm. you got to you got to watch the forum in which you use the terms so another if you're talking to several people spread all over the United States mm-hmm. and they hear that word like you said now he owns that word yeah well he owns now, a, even he, whether he said it, <clears throat> whether he, whether he said it or not uh-huh. he he said it. Well, there's a difference between saying the word, like I said, you are a blank, or he's saying, hey, this guy said blank. There's a difference between the two, in my opinion. When you say that, you know, teacher man, you are a poopy head. I own the word poopy head. Right. But if I say, hey, teacher man, Joe downstairs, you know, Joe, the guy. He says you're a poopy head. <laughs> Joe says that you're a poopy head. Well, I would have to say instead of fuck you, I'd say fuck Joe. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I don't know if that, I'm, try, uh, I'm trying to break it down in the simplest form. I don't think he's, I, he said a bad word, yes. Did he say a bad word to the public? To Was he calling these people? I, God, here well, I go. Well, but see, was he, he's, he's, what he's doing is... He wants to justify why he's being scolded, why his business is being punished. Well, they didn't do anything to Colonel Sanders when he called those people. Right. So why are they bothering me? Why are they? Why is it all affecting my business? Because they're not kneeling. And I'm glad you said that. I think his choice of example was bad. Yeah. I think it really was. He was behind closed doors. He was in a group of people that he's actually paying and stuff. So I don't know what happened. Was there a vengeance? Was there something like, ooh, you know, we can get him for this? Um, but it was a one-two punch. He blamed the NFL, and then he said this phrase. Um, so he stepped down. So. Papa John's, Papa John, Mr. Papa John is no more anymore. <laughs> What's the schmatter with schnatter? <laughs> I don't know. So he's gone. Oh boy. Oh, uh, I know. And uh, there's a there's a couple things. Um, you ever Snapchatted before? Do you know no. what Snapchat is? Never did. Well, because of Snapchat, there's another uh, person that's gone, and we'll talk about that here in just one sec. You're oh boy. Lis- you're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. Stick around. We'll be right back. Yeah, you can take your headphones off if you want. I'm gonna talk about your stuff here. Well, I want to look at what's important. Amazon Shipping Day. I mean, Black July. Oh, that's coming up. Careful what you say. (laughs) Well, I mean, that's no worse than Black Friday. (laughs) Black July (laughs) Day. Is that where no one shows up? Yeah. Well, there is a, a race question here. Okay. Um, I, I heard, matter of fact, I heard this on the radio. Okay. Oh, okay.
pretty soon, in a couple months, we'll have to come up here with jackets on. Yeah, really. The weather's going to change. It'll be and... too damn cold. <laughs> Summer's uh, really it seems to me zipping by for me. Yeah. Well, we had a very, very long, long winter, so. Yeah. Bryce, we were in April. It was still friggin' snowing. All right. Let's see. Um, we did the coconut. Coconut water. You want to talk about the race? Well, it, it, well, it says, my question is, should race be considered for college admission? Why would it be? It, would, it shouldn't be. Okay. Do you, have a, do you have a story or something behind that? No, you, is there I, something? no it was just a, something I thought about. Because I, I'm going back to my college days, uh, really. Um, you know, they lowered they lowered the teaching scores on tests, state tests, so that more blacks could pass it. Mm -hmm. um, on campus, the blacks got all the jobs. Think about what we just talked about. I know, but I'm not on the air. No, but I'm thinking about just think about what we just. Yeah. I mean, that was a that was a tough topic. Do we want to go into? Oh no no <laughs> okay. no 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 no! Absolutely not. Um, I don't think race should be considered. Okay. Either weighing positively or negatively. Um, you know, Arizona is the only. Uh, it's the first thing here. Is the only state. That doesn't change daylight savings and standard time. Mm -hmm. They keep the same time. And I know you and Amy love, yeah, like this time of year. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's something we could talk about. Yeah, you know I mean, what what would be the advantages of? Uh, th the only thing is, when it get when you get during the school year, it's motherfucking pitch black in the morning. Yeah. those kids standing at the bus stops, and that's why they change it. But I don't know. Might not be a hot enough topic. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to. Well, I want to go into because Papa John's got fired and left off or quit. I want to talk about real quick. Uh, the Academy Sports guy got fired. Did you hear about that story? No. I'll tell I'm you not. about it. You're you're gonna like it. And, and, and how about Miss Spain? What about Miss Spain? Miss Spain is actually a transvestite. All right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's not much to be said about it. Okay. But she won. Woohoo! And it's a guy. And Joe, big uproar. Joe Jackson is buried next to Michael. The family is just not having it. All right. So he's done. Goodbye, John. <laughs> <laughs> Better pizza, uh, better ingredients, better pizza. Mm hmm. Papa John's. He borrowed the money from his uncle to open that first pizza shop. Did he really? Yeah. Don't read ahead of me. Oh, I'm not going to say anything. Oh, okay. And whoops, the other thing I was going to. Oh. We're going to end on this. This is a lighter note. Okay. Not not this, what I'm printing out. Yeah. Don't look at it. Oh. <laughs> Why did you put the stuff up on my screen? If you I know. I'm like thinking, like, i got to tell them not to look at it yet. Well, I, I mean, but I can think about it. It gives me food for thought, you know, for when it comes up. Well, this is the price list that Amy got from her... Uh, her uh the guy that we buy hay from oh okay if we buy a side of beef well it's not a side of beef sorry processed so oh oh okay don't look at it now <laughs> All right. You got my interest peak. Well, you but can I'll look. You can look. You can look at it. Um. 
This is what I want. Filet mignon is $27 a pound. All right, ready? Chuck roast is more than... All right, I'm going to leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right, coming back. How's your pizza over there? <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting pizza tonight here at the station because we got to work a little bit late here. So uh, we're getting pizza? Yeah, sure. All right. Well, I just want to make sure. Give us a call yeah, at the station. Yeah. We're downtown. I, ha I have a feeling there might be some fettuccine Alfredo or maybe some stromboli in uh, there, too. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. Give us a call at the station at 407-448-8800. We are live from the Queen City Studio located in downtown Charlotte, North Carolina, in Texas anytime at 407. 448-8800. It's Pizza Friday. It is Pizza Friday. It is. It is Friday the 13th, by the way. Is it really? It is. It's the 13th of uh, July, and it's Friday. That's right. Whenever the first is on a Sunday, the 13th is always on a, uh, on a Friday. Is, it, is that really how it works? Yes. See, you're that's a that's a true teacher man mentality. No, that's a it's a math thing. It is a math thing, and yeah. it, it's a thing. So uh, we were talking about food, and of course, uh, some changes and stuff that are going on. And long time ago, I say long time ago, long long time ago, um, we were drinking teacher man. Uh, we brought into the studio. Do you remember kombucha? Yes. And what did, what was your opinion about kombucha? I you know what? If you remember correctly, I thought it was pretty good. Okay. So I liked the second one better than the first one. Okay. And you can look go to uh the Facebook page uh under Profit Radio and and search for Profit Radio and you can see the videos for Teacher Man E or drinking the the kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> but they had the the the, sh the the new foods that are coming out. What's a like a convention or whatever like like Comic Con and all this. This is like Foodicon. Oh well, uh, yeah. The yeah. new the new trending foods that are coming out. Convention. Yeah. So th I just want to bring this up real quick. These are um these are the top five that are coming out here. So it, teacher man, can you see on your screen? Vegan Robs. Vegan Robs. What is it more? What's this word? Moringa puffs. Moringa puffs. Moringa. What's moringa? I have the foggiest idea. Well, there's a lot of moringa that's coming out here, so watch your watch your food markets and stuff. This is all vegan stuff. These are the top trending things that are coming out. So here, and what's this right here? Wild tonic. And what's this say right here? Uh, kombucha. And look right underneath that. What's that say? Does that say 56% alcohol? No, it says 5.6. Oh, so it's an alcoholic beverage. It's an right? alcoholic beverage, and they're making beers and whatnot now with kombucha. Hmm. A healthy beer. Imagine that. It says gluten-free on the bottom of the, of the thing there. Oh, my goodness. So here's another thing. Here's another trend that's coming out. What's this word right here? I can't read that. Whoa. Yeah, put your glasses on. It looks like a big German word. Uh, pronounced properly, it's Ashwang and Ashwang and Hebler. <laughs> and what does that Ashwang and Hebler? And what does that mean? I I don't know. Your ass is hanging out. Your ass is hanging out. <laughs> and everyone, this oh, this I, is a we've had this before. This is Guy. I think of Amy. Every, I think of my daughter every time I see that. And Guy is a G H E E. That's a big thing that's coming out. We've seen that in Publix. It's a uh, what is it? Do clarified you know? butter. Clarified butter. And then so yeah, those are the top five things that are coming out. So look at your food mark. Kombucha is making a big thing, especially in the beer market. They're putting a lot of kombucha and whatnot into beer. Um, to I'd be interested in trying one of them. You know what? We were talking about the IPAs, and and um, our salesman Bomb was saying that you know his friends, his college snooty friends, were. What the hell is he going to get his ass up here? Well, I don't know. I talked to him the other day. He's he's running his ass off. We, he's been passing out the the one K stickers to everyone. Now he's got the shirts too. Now he's got the shirts to pass out to everybody and uh, whatnot. But he, you know, everyone was drinking these four hundred calorie beers, and so kombucha beer is going to be the next big thing. I could do. I could go for that. Put your stock into I it. I could go for that. So, uh, and speaking of, uh, you know, losing their jobs, and we were talking about Papa John's stepping down and whatnot. I want to know your opinion about this story. So, are you familiar with Academy Sports? 
No. Okay. Isn't that like a uh, um, sports authority? I was going. I was going to say down in Florida we had a sports authority that that for whatever reason I think Amazon and the internet kind of killed sports yeah. authority. And plus they were goddamn. You ever walked in there to to buy something? Expensive. Holy Christ! Because they loved their stuff. It was so expensive. So here's a story about a guy. Academy Sports, I guess, is a is it a like a used store and a regular store with sporting goods, or is this all new? I oh I have no idea. I don't know either. I have no idea. So Academy we have Academy Sports up here in the Carolinas. I'm sure you guys have them in your location, especially New Jersey. Go New Jersey. <laughs> no, uh, probably not New Jersey because I think they do a big business with guns. And and New Jersey, New York, those northern states, uh huh, d- uh, terrible, tough, tough, tough. Gun really, yeah, really, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'm glad um, I'm glad you told me that because Academy Sports manager fired weeks after intercepting a gun thief suspected in the Florida store. Um, that's what he he was he was an assistant manager at a, a Academy of Sports in Florida, and we'll find out what time it, or what town it is as soon as I scroll down. Tallahassee. Um, Dean Crouch, 32, was working at Academy Sports in Tallahassee on June 29th when the robbery suspect, Jason White, allegedly tried to steal a gun. And in the, in the, in after White reportedly tried to flee with a stolen firearm, he requested to see. Crouch stepped in and ultimately detained him. Crouch and the, uh, an assistant manager at the store was nearby when the uh, incident re- occurred. And he heard an employee stop, you know, hey, stop that guy, you know, and that's what happened. So the long of the short of this story is shh, putting somebody in danger. Well, what happened was they he asked for a backpack, he asked for guns and ammunition. Well, he had a backpack in, from the store. He had okay. a back. He had a backpack. Set it up on the counter. He's like, "I want to see uh, whatever gun. I want some of the see the ammunition." And literally shoved it in the bag and took off running. Bing! I'm out of here. So what happened was, they said, "You know, stop that guy. Stop that guy." So he did, and they wrestled him down and detained him. So cops came out, arrested him, took him away. Um, with attempting of sealing a firearm. Now, yeah. what they, what the sports, not sports authority, the academy sports guy didn't know that he already stole two guns from a pawn shop earlier that day. They found that out after they went through the, uh, the guy, okay. white, the, the suspect's car. You ready for this? I'm going to scroll down. The guy should be getting the medal. Yeah, he should be getting the medal. Here, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. There's the guy who got arrested. Look at him. Amazing. Yeah, he's got this big... S- wide smirk like, on his face, like he's um, auditioning for something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Look at me! I got away with three guns. Right. Almost. So uh, he said that st- uh, he was trying to make out with a forty caliber. Is that right? Am I saying that right? Forty caliber. All right, and, and ammunition. So he got fired. Uh, he was actually suspended, and they actually. A couple weeks later, after they they looked at the tape and all that stuff, they actually suspended him, and then they fired him because in the rule handbook says you are not allowed to put your hands on any employee, or not any employee, any employee is not allowed to put his hands on any one customer while they're in the store, and he stopped them right at the front door. Right. Jeez. Oh, God. That's, that's, uh, he, 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 he lost his job. And, and, you know, um, I'm sure the people could see, too. A uh, cute little family he's got there, too. He does, Yeah, he's got a cute little family right here. I mean, he's a young guy, and he's got... He's cute got little kids. Like a two-, three-year-old and a newborn, it looks like. Yeah. He actually had this... Because of this happening, he's got a lot of backlash that's going on. He sold it. had to sell his house. Had to sell his house and downsize a little bit because he, that, he was the breadwinner. She was a stay-at-home mom, and he lost his job, and he had to sell the house. And uh, That's terrible. So he was just stopping this guy. This that guy, asshole smiling. Yeah, smiling right there. And uh, just think of how many lives he, he saved. Potentially saved, pot- right? Yeah, potentially saved that um, th- this guy was trying to. So there you go. He, he was an Academy Sports manager, fired. Uh, in Tallahassee, Florida, for stopping someone from stealing guns from a store, and it, it's a, I don't know. What do you do? I don't do? get it. I don't get it. What do you do? I, I don't get it. What do you do? Uh, it, wait till he gets out of the store. I would have brought a gun with me. Let him get out of the store and then shoot him. <laughs> 
So, right. I mean, he saved a lot of lives. Yes, he did. He, yes, I mean, he did. Who knows how many lives he would have saved. And um, we were talking about Snapchat earlier. And, Teacher Man, you don't know what Snapchat is, do you? No, I don't use it. Never used it. Are you familiar with Facebook at all? Yes. Okay. Very. So, are you familiar with the top of your screen in, on Facebook? Hold on, I'm going to pull this up. Well, you have all your, pull your, all your tabs up? No, I'm going to pull. Hold on, let's see if I can pull mine up here. If you look right here. Uh, right here on the story where it says stories. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. that's where you see all your friends. Well, no, no. These are stories. So these are people that when they post this stuff on Facebook, this has gone within 20, see where it says 22 hours ago? Yeah. Three hours ago. These are things that, that disappear within 24 hours. So you post something and it's gone within 20, oh. you'll never be able to find it again. You'll never, unless, and most of these ding-dongs, they post it to their normal page and then they post it up here at the same time. So you can always go back to the normal page. Uh -huh. But what's happening is, Snapchat, Snapchat, <laughs> Snap, <laughs> Snapchat, is nothing but this right here. This 22 right. hours. Well, well yeah. Uh, virtually, so, it goes away as soon as you do what you're going to do with within it. Within 24 hours, as soon as you watched it, it goes away. So there's a... there's a. Oh, God, I hope this... If, if, I, if this ever happens to any one of my family members, this would be horrible. Three ladies that work in a nursing home. Nursing home slash medical care slash recovery, whatever. They, three of them are charged... Um, for doing a Snapchat of a, a, a lady dying. She uh. she had a stroke. She had a stroke, and while they were waiting for hospice, they were sitting there. Three women wor who worked at a senior living facility in Georgia were charged on Friday over alleged role in the Snapchat video invo involving a dying 76-year-old patient. The clip was, according to the police, titled The End. That was the end. Of, no, that was the title of the video. Oh, man. I... The, the, I Sue the ass off those families. So, uh, Jordan, Leah, Bruce, Maya, Jano, Moss, 21, uh, Lizzie, Jonathan, why, who comes up with these names? Well, Cervantes Ramirez. Yeah, 19, <laughs> allegedly used, uh, use a vape and using profanity, allegedly using a vape, I don't know what that is. I, That's I guess one of those uh, electric cigarettes. Well, they can use it if they want, but how can you allegedly use vape and profanities while ignoring the patient? Oh, I guess they were they smoking. They were smoking in the room with, mm -hmm. the, with one of those electric electronic cigarettes. Yep. So the three of them were working in the Bentley Senior Living Facility in Jefferson, reportedly sent a monitor unnamed patient on uh, June 13th while waiting for hospice to arrive. So, oh, boy. yeah, they did a Snapchat while they were waiting for this. The, the, um, to see, instead of the police and unemployment reporting, see the clip on social media app featuring the accused woman smoking a vape pen using profanities while making obscene gestures at the camera. The woman who was arrested, the women were arrested on June 22nd, um, have been charged with exploiting an elderly and a disabled person. So that's what they were Snapchatting her dying while they were waiting oh, for. Man. Yeah, they were waiting for. She, the, I guess the lady, the the lady that they were filming had a stroke. And uh, they, you know, I mean, if I if I had a stroke, I probably wouldn't know what was going on anyway. If I, they wanted to take my pictures, I wouldn't give a damn. Yeah, but I mean, think of the family. And I, I understand. I understand, and that's that's the crux of the matter. Yeah, is you know how the family members feel, and um, what I mean. If I was the parent of one of those girls. I, I would disown them. I, I wouldn't want to know them. How are you raised to, yeah. to, to do – you're always raised to what? Respect your elders, right? Uh, right. Unbelievable. Uh, some people – well, yeah, that's the problem nowadays. Some people aren't raised. They're left, to, they're left to their own devices, have to raise themselves. And the ages of these Which is not always their fault. Well, no, it's not their fault, but I mean, there's other, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Right. So, and, I mean. And, and I don't care how old you are. You that Those three people knew right from wrong. Exactly. And, and they knew what they were doing was e wrong. Exactly. And, and you know, there's, like I said, a village raised a child. There's other people that, even if they don't have a parent figure or something like that, there's always someone in the community that they deal with on a daily basis. I mean, I've always had people that growing up and stuff, even when I started at Home Depot many years ago, um, I don't want to say I didn't have a father figure. I had a father. Right. Of course. But I didn't, he was, he was, he was a workaholic, so I never really saw him. So when I was working at Home Depot, there's a gentleman, uh, by the name of Sanford, that was his name, and he taught me to 
that's where I kind of get my my mantra from. Just because you know more about something doesn't make you smarter than him, right? Or right. smarter than them. And he he was uh, the head of the building materials and lumber department. And people would come in there and go, "I need a two by four. I don't know what a two by four looks like." And he would literally take them, teach them, educate them, and send them on this way. He was way. a wealth of knowledge. He was a wealth of knowledge. And uh, so, I mean, there's there's people. Why don't they have those people in their lives? I, I I don't know. I don't want to say why. I'm like, like why don't you? I, I, I why don't, don't, don't you go to school? Why don't you? Kids. Yeah. <laughs> why don't you make your bed? Why don't you have people that outside of your family that well, get better friends? Do you I know, guess. <laughs> do you know? I used to make my bed, and my mother would come up after I went to school and remake it. Really? Why? Because nothing was ever done to her, her way. It was had to be her. I mean, you could eat off the floors. You could show that house as a model house. Any day of the week, any evening of the, of the any time. Right. She was. A I see that in her. Clean, clean, clean <laughs> freak. Yeah. Well, I never, I never made my bed. I, my, I had a, a uncle, my mom's half brother, who used to live with us. Uh -huh. um, he was mentally challenged, but yeah. part of his duties, as far as living in the house with us, um, was to do laundry, clean kitchen. And uh, make do, the beds. Yeah, do housework. I mean, yeah. th that's something I never saw my mom make my bed. I never saw my mom, um, you know, I saw her cook, of course. Um, for the most part, I saw her cook. <laughs> um, but I never saw her doing laundry. I never saw her doing all that stuff. My uncle Jim was, he was the main guy. He, he was, yeah, he did everything. <laughs> My my mom ironed my father's boxes. <laughs> oh God! She ironed his handkerchiefs. Yeah, I mean, unbelievable, Squ unbelievable square thing right there. <laughs> yeah. No, no, he always carried his in the back pocket, the wallet in the left, and handkerchief in the right. Mm. You ever, you ever, um, now that we're in July, one of the biggest things in July is. In Florida, if you live on the coast and whatnot, I don't know how far up it goes. I just know Fourth of July weekend, a uh, holiday that we just came out of, is uh, scalloping. Have you ever gone scalloping before? No. I've no. been shrimping, uh, oh, you know, but I've never been scalloping. No, really? No. And uh, have you known people that have done that before? No. No, scalloping, really? No. And as long yes, as I live in Florida? Yes, you do. No. You've got to know someone. Clamming, shrimping, yes. Fishing, did a shitload of it really oh yeah so uh there's a good friend of ours between uh, uh myself and my wife uh there's a good friend of ours uh when we had a uh, show over on the fm dial over in florida uh I i'd lose him i'd lose him for two weeks because he would go to um oh god give me one sec i'm gonna remember the name home assassa home assassa springs home assassa florida and would go scalloping every fourth of july for for almost a week and a half that's on the gulf Yep, and you would go down there and and literally just pick up all these these scallops, you know, they're bay scallops, so they're the bigger ones. Yeah. And he, sea, that, sea scallops. Sea scallops. Sorry. Bay, bay scallops are the little ones. Four zero seven four four eight 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 zero zero. You can yell at me anytime. <laughs> so, I guess up in New Jersey, here we go, New Jersey. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love you. Unfortunately, this gentleman here, um, they do. Uh, Crabbing, they go out there and, and kind of the same thing. They do crabbing up there. The blue same, claws, yeah. Blue claws and do all that stuff. Um, he in, he got a um, a bacteria, a, a, a skin eating virus, a little thing, and he was out there just crabbing. He was in the water. I guess I don't know crabbing. I guess they get in the water to get the crabs. I'm not sure how they do it in New Jersey. New Jersey people can can tell me. But did you, did you know I had a clam boat in New York? Well, hold on a sec. Okay. But he is getting ready to. He's he's going to lose all his arms. He's well, going to have two. Well, he's going to lose. <laughs> he's going to lose. However them. many he has, he's going to lose them. He's going to lose all of them. All four of his. Oh, he may lose all four of his limbs. All of his limbs are uh, bacteria infection. See, and back to, back to viral infections uh, are pretty easy to cure. Yeah, bacterial infections, not so much. Yeah, he uh, Angela Perez 
or Angel Perez, 60, complaining of symptoms after returning from crabbing on July 2nd, which is the same time you would go scalloping. So he said he um, noticed scarring all over his body, noticed that all four limbs began to swell and change colors, um, kind of let it go. He said, I'll just drink it off. And <laughs> <laughs> so eventually they put him in the hospital, and because the doctors believe that it's a, what is this word right here? Uh, vibro, vi- vibrio, vibrio, vibrio. That's close enough. Um, which is found in warmer waters of the river meets the sea, um, is behind this infection. So be careful out there if you're doing any of that stuff. Kind of reminds me of that amoeba thing that we used to hear about in Florida a lot. Yeah, we always, freshwater lakes. We always get that the the amoeba the that crawls up your nose and eats your brains and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So you said you had a, a clam boat. Yeah, I had a clam boat um, when I was teaching school on Long Island. I had a clam boat and I had it, I docked it out in uh, Blue Point, okay, which is out a little further than my, where my brother is. Mm-hmm. And um, what we used to do was we we get on. I mean, sun. It was still dark when me and my partner met at the docks, mm-hmm. and, and the sun would be rising as we got to our clamming spots. We we'd clam all morning. We had to be back into the dock by two o'clock because that's when the clam trucks would come by and buy our clams. Right. On the way in. Um, in uh, late July and all of August, sometimes it went into September a little bit, but all of August, mm-hmm. uh, on the way in, my partner would stand on the front of the boat, and he'd just hold his hand up, you know, and and wherever he pointed, that's where I that's where I would steer the boat. Oh, he, he was looking he, for the clams. No, no, he was looking for the cra- for crabs. He would catch oh, crabs. Yeah, he would net crabs on the way in. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. And then, and then we'd be in, we'd sell the clams, we'd sell the clams by the bushel, and then we had a bunch of crabs to take home. <laughs> nice. Yeah. What kind of crabs were they? Blue Blue claw. Blue claw? Big, big old blue claws. Oh, man, great eating. Yeah. I, I remember uh, uh, fishing with a good friend of mine over in Palmetto, which is on the um, in the Gulf. Yes. Just, just below, or just above Tampa? Just below Tampa. Below. Below Tampa. Yeah. And my cousin has a house right there on the inlet. Baller, and uh, she's got a dock out there, and we'd park Alpha Base Two, which is my boat, um, twenty-six foot Regal. It's a nice boat. Yes. And uh, we'd park it out there, and sure enough, at night we'd sit out there and just fish the inlet, and you you'd have the lights shining down on the water, and sure enough, you'd see this little wrinkle in the water, and it'd be a blue crab. And I'm just, yep. I must have pulled up six or seven, eight of them and freeze them. Oh yeah. And then you put them in the pot and stuff. Uh, oh yeah, good eats, good eats. Oh, delight. So I want to talk about a couple weird things that that had happened in the last couple couple weeks and stuff. Something that um, I don't know. It, it I don't know if it's going to change your life or change the way you look at things, but uh, I'm going to bring Maybe it up. It'll change the way I look. Yeah, it'll do something. <laughs> so stick around. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. I'll be right back. She's on her way home. Oh, good for her. Yeah, that's why I want to get out of here. Not get out of here. I want to leave. I'm out of here. See you later. Okay. <clears throat> what, do you got to feed? No, 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 no. Oh, she's going to do that? Yeah, she'll be home in time. You want anything? Uh, yeah, it's about time. Okay. Thank you.
Say what? I might try some of this shit. What shit? The beef. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that when we come back. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh. I don't feel like going back downstairs and get you another one after that uh, first one. First one's gonna go down fast. And I'm not gonna put the bottle down. Yeah, bad luck. Caught myself doing that with my coffee this morning. work. I did my oh, coffee, you know, wah, wah, wah. and I put it down to grab up the and I said, gotta take my sip. Yeah. <laughs> Burns alley. Okay. Was that a bowling alley? No. Ready? You doing okay over there? Doing just fine. Yeah, you're all right. You I'm, got you? Doing, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> you're listening. Uh, you're listening to Deacon Live right here on Profit Radio. My name is the Deacon. Over to my far right hand side is Teacher Man. Oh yes, I am. You can give us a call anytime at the Queen City Studio Station at 407-448-8800 or text us live at any time 407-448-8800. Don't forget to watch us on Twitter and not Twitter. Sorry. Twitch and YouTube. Uh, I, we got one of our first sponsors right here. Oh, Burns Alley. Burns okay. Alley. Yep. All you got to do is uh, contact me at deacon at profitradio.com. Uh, they send us a t-shirt. We put you on the air. That's how easy it is. It's that simple. So this is Burns Alley, and this is in um, in uh, St. Charles. Not St. Charles. Charleston. <laughs> I'm thinking Monopoly <laughs> is what I'm thinking. St. <laughs> Charles. Charles Place. <laughs> right. This is Charleston, South Carolina, <laughs> and it's some good friends of ours that we met while we were uh, uh, gallant- in Charleston. Yeah, Charleston. Vacationing. Yep. It's very nice. Very nice. And uh, the funny part is there's a there's a, a a historical section and there's like a tourist section. And if they don't tell you where they meld, you'll never tell the difference. Really? Yeah, I mean it's it's they've really done a great job as far as um keeping the historical. We did a walking tour when we were down there and they were showing us like the difference between like the buildings during the hurricanes and stuff actually has, you ready for this? Some of the buildings closer to the port and whatnot have a big huge probably twelve inch disc steel plate with a bolt that goes all the way through it through the whole entire house and then there's a, a uh one on the other side. And they would literally bolt the house the upper floors together because of the hurricanes. Really? You see what I'm saying? No, I see what you're saying. I never heard of it. Now, the new construction, because of the, the historical district, they would make these faux... 12 inch plates on the front of the house with the with a fake bolt on it didn't go through the, all the way right, house but right. the, the facade of the house had to have those same bolts if they did any reconstruction on the house just to maintain the uh, maintain the uh, yep the uh, ambiance so that's kind of cool uh, it is yeah so do you like to go swimming uh talking about going scalloping and stuff I, you know what i well as you know i was a surfing fool so i mean i loved swimming and when we were younger, we used to vacation in Florida all the time. And uh, even when my kids, you know, I did it as a kid, and I did it when my kids were kids. Mm-hmm. And we just absolutely loved the water, period. Boats, we had boats up the ass, um, fishing <laughs> up the wazoo. Uh, Jesus, there's a lot of ass and wazoos going on over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. So when you're getting the water too long, what happens to what happens to yourself? You get like raisiny. Okay. Raisiny. Oh, raisin. I thought you said raisiny. Raisiny, raisin, <laughs> like a raisin. Skin okay. Gets like a raisin. And do you know why that happens? Um, no. I mean, I'm I'm guessing that the fluid, you you're, you lose fluid in your fingertips. One of the things. You ready for the lies? Okay. Are you ready for the lies? All right. They actually say 
<clears throat> it's it's part of your nerves. It's part of your central nervous system while your fingers prune. And what happens is it's your nerves reaction to too much saturation of water. So it's trying to pull itself back. The nerves are. It's, they're getting flooded. They're getting waterlogged. Now what they do with infants to see if they have... This is back in, you know, when I was growing up and stuff. What they would do with infants to make sure that they, they didn't have any neurological damage when they were born was actually... <laughs> soak them in a tub for eight days? <laughs> well, they soaked the, the, the fingers and toes in, the, in, in water. And what they would find is, like, two of their fingers would prune and the other three would not prune. So they would say, okay, now we have a problem. So then they would dive into the neurological damage and then they would find out that they had... Um, what's a neurological disease that, that kids are born with? Cerebral palsy. Yep, and they would find out that this is the first inclination of they were going to have something wrong with them later on in life. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I mean, well, I, you know, I'd like to, <clears throat> like to find out all that good stuff. So it's funny, when I when I heard that story as a kid, growing up, I would always, you know, and I'd look at my palms, you know, my fingers and stuff and say, all right, I'm, everything's pruning, I'm good. <laughs> 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 now, something, huh. something that's coming out now are called water gloves. Have you heard of this yet? No, I haven't. Water well, gloves. Well, you know, I, 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 another thing in my repertoire. <clears throat> Is I used to scuba dive, mm -hmm. and uh, we used to lobster dive quite a bit in, in uh, Florida. Right. And uh, a matter of fact, um, Amy's mom um, was in the middle of the class and wound up getting pregnant with my son, so she had to drop out. Anyway, wait, uh, hold on. Uh, that so, had, that so during the class, you? No, not during the class. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because it was uh, several weeks long. Okay. But uh, hey, oh yeah, ding dong. So uh, <laughs> ding dong. So anyway, I uh, whenever we whenever uh, you know we dove in the ocean, I always wore gloves. Mm -hmm. And only for what? For protection, right? For protect. Yeah, exactly. for the most part. Yeah. So do you know who Dax Shepard is? No. Okay, good, because he's a dumbass. His wife, Kristen Bell, is um she is one of those. She was an actress at one time. I say one time. She still is an actress. Um, but they have put in their social life completely on instagram they completely put on youtube they're doing all this stuff because um she's had children her breasts have her breasts have gotten so full with milk they've done videos of of dak her husband making a shake well no actually having it because the pump weren't working he would actually because the baby wasn't nursing he would actually have to sit there and milk her to relieve, yeah, it, it's they're they got. And a, they had this on YouTube. They got a yeah, they got a weird fucking relationship. Oh, I'm telling you. Now she's cute, and he's kind of he's kind of a cool guy. And, and what are these? Her milking gloves? Well, no, these are not her milking gloves. These are her water gloves because what she says is when she wears these gloves that they don't make her hands prune. And she doesn't like the the touch of her body with her pruny fingers. Like anyone who's got pruny fingers, she doesn't like. Yeah, I she know. Doesn't, she doesn't mind having the shit squeezed out of her tits, but <laughs> she don't want her fingers to raise it up. Hey, yeah, yeah. So it's well accepted fact that celebrities do differently, do everything differently than the rest of us. So when you when celebrities say they wear fur fur coats to the gym, most people think, eh, not too much. <clears throat> but actress Kristen Kristen Bell. Did something that's pretty jaw dropping. She wore gloves in a pool. Apparently, this wasn't on accident. Her husband, Dax Shepard, who's a fucking he's cool. I take that back. He was a jackass for a while, but he's cool. Um, my bride wears gloves in the pool because she hates feeling pruny fingers on the tips of her skin. And then she said that, uh, you know, I love her and, and and whatnot. But this is a new fad that's going on. Um, if you've got the money, I guess I'm sure these gloves are probably two, three hundred dollars. Well, I never had the problem of worrying about my wrinkled fingers on my skin. <laughs> so yeah, if you if you want to be shay shay shay, you know, make sure you wear uh, gloves in the pool, and they're Oof. all they're all gonna ask you, why why are you wearing gloves? You're like, hey, yeah, you know what? I, I got this disease, and it's contagious. So stay away. Yeah, stay away. Um, and we were talking about um. The who are we talking about? Hold on one second. Let me go over my notes real quick. So, oh, uh, the remember the Snapchat people we were talking about? Yeah. All right. In New Orleans, Snapchat. Snapchat. What I say? Snapshot. It's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> we knew what you were, we knew what you meant. Have you ever you? Um, all right. Let me let me do it this way. Funerals. Normally, the body's in the casket. 
right? Yes. All right. So it's embalmed. They put it in the casket, and then you know you, everyone does the viewing. Everyone does the thing and stuff like that, right? Yeah. All right. So have you seen pictures of people that are like they want to be embalmed and then sitting on their motorcycle, like for the viewing? I saw that in a motorcycle movie years ago. Okay, so it's a movie. The guy was killed in a motorcycle accident. Okay. And they had they had him, uh, they cremated him on top of his motorcycle. N- cremated him on the motorcycle? Yeah, yeah. So th- was they he- set the whole thing on fire. So was he like dead and then they just threw his hunk of meat over the motorcycle and then just set it on I fire? Know, they stuck a broom, broom in his ass to <laughs> set him up. He was sitting up straight. He had his helmet on. Right. He had a cigar, had his uh, uh, goggles. And uh, he was holding the handlebars, and they doused him with gas. Um, you know, it wasn't a real guy, naturally. Right. Doused him with gasoline and lit him up. And this is a movie. This was a movie. All right. Well, in real life, um, this gentleman, let me see what his name is. Hold on. Um, let's see. Give me one sec. Renard Matthews. Renard Matthews. He was 18 years old of New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. Um, it was robbed and shot to death on June, yeah, June 25th. And he was only 18 years old. Oh, 18 man. years old. And he was kind of a homebody and stuff. He he uh, he loved his video games. He loved to he loved his favorite he had his favorite soda that he would drink all the time and he had his favorite chips, his snacks and stuff. Right. He was shot and stuff and his fa- of course, you know, uh, as a family would be at, at any age, uh, losing a son or daughter or anything like that, you'd be up in arms and and crazy and stuff. Uh, in New Orleans, they actually, uh, they went to the um, the funeral home and they said, can, can you do this for us? And they're like going, we sure can. We sure can, man. We sure can do that for you. Yeah. So what they did was, the deceased teenager who loved basketball and video games was honored by putting on his favorite outfit. And if you look here on the uh, on the video here, that's him. He has his Celtics number eleven jersey on. Got his Doritos. There's his Doritos. I think it's. I don't. I can't see what soda that is. It looks like Barks, doesn't it? I looks like Barks. <laughs> yes. All right. And he's got his shades on. He's got his do rag on. Um. And he's got his remote control in his hand. And he's propped up in a chair. And that's how they, how they saw him. That's how they viewed him. That's how they viewed him. He was only 18 years old. He looks 18. He looks like he's 20-something. <laughs> he yeah, does, he does he, look a little bit older. He looks a little older, but he's 18 <clears throat> years old. He was gunned down, unfortunately, in a robbery and stuff in New Orleans. And, uh, by the way, this right here is illegal. To, oh, really? It is illegal in the whole entire United States. And why is that? Because they say that the you once... It's, it's a weird thing that... When you die, hold on, let me take a sip here. It's it's going to be a long speech. Hold on. You start to stink <clears throat> if you're not embalmed. So when you're alive, you you own your your property. You are your own personal, you know, um, entity. Right. The state owns you. Your straw man. Don't get don't don't start there. I'm not gonna say anything. Don't start. But the, the state owns your straw man figure. All right. So when you die. All right. And unless you have a power attorney, you know, if, if, if your mom or whatever, for God bless her soul, if, if, if her mom, your mom ever ends up in a nursing home, you have power attorney to do anything. So you have control of what goes on with her. Right. All right. So when you die, your body is this ominous, free floating limbo between state. Well, it has no spirit, has no soul. No, no, no. Who owns you is basically what I'm going oh, at. Okay. The state doesn't own you. The church doesn't own you. Your family doesn't own you. You are your own free body. Okay. That's okay. the that's the only time that you are no longer joined or linked to any of these entities. All okay. Right? Gotcha. So it is illegal to take be take a body out of their natural state after death, which is laying down. In a casket, and move them, or transfer them, or do anything with them. Hmm. So this right here, they say this is a. I, I don't know how they got away with this because sitting somewhat is a natural state. And, well, death is a natural state, but I mean, sitting like that is not a natural state. For sitting him, like that dead. For him, it is not dead. 
Maybe if you die, you just sit right there. What about Elvis? He fell asleep on the toilet or died on the toilet. That's a natural state for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's a long, there's a long drawn out legal process as far as how you make this actually happen. I don't know if it's the degree of angle that he has to be. Because he, if you look at him, he's kind of leaning back in the chair. I mean, you and I are sitting up in. Our, well, I'm sitting up in my chair. You're kind of. I like to lean back. I'm looking like him. Right, but. You know what's the degree of what's the degree that they say by law? I mean, here we go on semantics. You know what's the degree of laying, sitting up, and laying down? Is it thirty-five degrees? Is it twenty degrees? Is it you know? I think if, if, you, if I, zero is laying down, that's one hundred and eighty. So once you pass once you pass ninety degrees, you're on your way down. Okay, so ninety degrees is sitting right. sitting straight up. Right. All right. So forty-five degrees, like you're sitting right now. Forty-five degrees. Once you pay, that, that would be no ninety plus. Uh, forty-five. It, it, uh, one. No, no. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about your torso, your upper torso. Torso. Yeah. Well, ninety, and then you add forty-five more degrees to it, and then if you add another forty-five, that would be the hundred and eighty. Right. Hundred and eighty degrees would be vertical. Flat. Yeah. Right. Right. But what I'm saying is, so <laughs> here, here's your legs, here's your torso. Okay, that's ninety degrees. Okay, that's ninety degrees. If you're looking on the camera. Yes. So let's say this. This is your leg still. And now you're laying like this. That's 135 degrees. Okay, so is it from 90 to 135 degrees, and then 100? Once you pass 135 degrees, you're going. You're on the laying down okay. side. Okay, that I guess that's my argument. So what if they had him on the past 135 degrees in this picture? That would be. He would be technically laying, laying down. down, right? So I guess right. they could get away with this. Now, granted, he doesn't have the whole box and everything around him, the fluffy pillows and whatnot. So maybe they got away with. I mean, no one's going to go out there with a protractor and figure out what the actual degree of angle that he's laying down at. No, I, I don't. I wouldn't want to get close to him. Period. Well, I mean, the the the, the fermenter, fermenter, <laughs> fermentator. The the uh, you're talking about the mortician? embalmer, <laughs> fermenter. Uh, yeah, yep. yeah, so yeah, 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 he's yeah. he's dead. He's dead. Well, I'm sorry. I, 18 years old. That's too young. Yeah, very young. And you know what? The background of the story, and I'm going to bring you down just a little bit. Um, he was a homebody, and his mom said, you know, you need to be out visiting friends and stuff. So she bought him a dog, and he would religiously walk the dog. And that's how he got twice killed. a day, oh, and then boy. that's how he got robbed and stuff and got shot. So. Uh, prayers go out to you, uh, Renard Matthews, 18 years old in New Orleans. Uh, I'm glad you were um, uh, you enjoyed your last days as far as eating your Doritos, drinking your Barks, and playing your PlayStation. Looks like PlayStation 4. Yeah. And uh, and when we come back, we're going to talk meat. Meat. Lots of meat. Oh. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. Stick around. Uh, we'll be right back. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. That's a shame, though, huh? That is. That is. Well, I mean, you know, you know from me that I, I think anybody dying before their time is yeah. a shame. I know. That's why when I bring those up, I have to be real, kind of dance around a little bit. Don't worry. Don't worry. I don't want to hurt, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. Standing rib roast. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many ribs that is. Oh, well, it's $18 a pound. It's well, a stupid question. Okay, here we go. Ready? Nope. Nope. Come back, finish this up. She should be home soon. And then we're going to pay. We're going to play. <laughs> we're going to play speed round. With pay, your, the, pay the bills? Well, we're going to play uh, speed round. Okay. With you, real quick. All so right. You got to be on your toes. I'm always on my toes. Okay. How high are you on your toes? <laughs> <laughs> right on the knuckles. Yeah, you're right on the knuckles. You're listening to Deacon Live right here on Proper Radio. My name is Deacon. Over to my far right hand side, on his tippy tippy toes. Yes, yes. Give us a call at the station at the Queen City the Queen City Studio Station. Oh God. <laughs> at 407-448-8800 located in downtown charlotte north carolina and being on your tippy toes um we have a 
chance opportunity to buy some meat. So we want to be on top of it. And when I say we, we're trying to buy meat, you've seen the guys in the trucks driving around with the freezer in the back, right? Yeah. They're like going, hey, you want to buy some uh, yeah. meats and stuff? And have you ever bought any of those from them? Uh, boxes of hamburgers I have. And how, how were they? They were fantastic. Were they really? Yeah. Matter of fact, we used to have a guy come um, when we lived in um, uh, right on Suwannee there. Uh, we used to have a guy come around every year. For about five or six years, he really? came. He came yeah. And it's legit. It was legit. Because yeah. every time I see him in, in the neighborhood and stuff, when we had a neighborhood, I would say that, that's not same legit. Same guy, same truck, same. He had he usually had two. I, I can't remember if it was two or three freezers mm -hmm. on the, on the back of his truck. Like a little uh, little uh, Chevy S10 or something. He had a, a freezer on the back of it, right? Well, no. This was a this was a full size pickup, and he had a couple of them. Okay, but it was a it was a truck. It was like a. Your truck, not like a swan's truck or anything like that. No, 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 no. Okay. No. All right. And you bought, and the meat was legit? It was terrific. Where'd you get it from? I don't know. I don't know. It, it was un unmarked packages. <laughs> probably, probably, probably came oh, from God. China, you know, uh -huh. or before there was, uh, I don't know, what was that, cock and bull uh, disease in, in England. Oh, mad cow disease? Yeah, yeah. Probably, right. probably right about that time. Yeah. So, I mean, so I guess I always looked at him like it was all cheap meat and stuff because I knew a friend of mine's mom bought him. He's like, oh, I bought all these steaks and stuff. And she bought like ribeyes and they're all like vacuum sealed, right? Yeah. And, and she, well, no, the hamburgers weren't. Okay, but the most of the meat that they had right. was vacuum sealed. And, and she pulled one out and I guess, you know, my friend's dad was like going, this is like eating a goddamn boot. And I was like going, all right, well, it's a scam. It's a scam. I'm not <laughs> gonna go with it so um we have a chance i say it's a chance opportunity um we <laughs> on the french we have we buy hay for our horses and stuff and we buy really good hay we buy alfalfa fescule it's a very expensive hay like a, a, a round bale for all the you country folk out there hold on i gotta do the country folk thing it's like shrimp cocktail for horses. Well, hold on let me do <laughs> there you go <laughs> so <laughs> All the country folk out there, it's about fifty dollars a round bale, and then we get like the 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 square bales for I don't know ninety dollars. I don't know. I don't know how much it costs. Probably ten to twenty dollars. Anyway, but um, the guy who we buy our hay from, he's got a hundred, almost two hundred some odd acres surrounding us. You know, a, a plot here, a plot here, a plot here, and this plot does hay, and this plot he does cattle, and this plot he does hay, and this plot he does cattle, and he rotates his crops. You know, the cows go to the hay place, and the right. hay gets grown on the cr on the cattle. Anyways, so he's processed. I don't know how many heads of cattle he's... He, he butchers his own. He he raises cattle. Okay. And butchers... I don't know how many heads he's done of, of cows or whatnot. I don't know what the terminology is. And this is the result um, this year of what he's got. Now, if you look... At the hold on, I'm gonna pull this up on the uh, on the screen here so you guys can see it here on the um, when you're looking at the 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 video thing. When your buddy's done in the chair playing his game, we can whack him up. <laughs> right? No, don't say that. No, he was a, he was a good guy. He was yeah, good, he was. He, he was, was a good kid. Homebody. Right. So let's see. Uh, what are you looking at there? What do you got? Uh, what am I looking at? Yeah, so you're looking at oh, the price. I, I'm looking at. I'm looking at the first page. All right, so you're looking at the price list. It's all one page. I think the bottom is just his information and stuff. The second page is just his information. Well, it does say though too on the back that um, it's uh, it black Angus black Angus cows. Mm-hmm. Um, cattle. Right. So I just you know I, I don't. Well, know read that to me. Hold on, no, hold on. Okay, okay. God. Okay. We so. thank you for we thank. Let me get this so I can yep. put it in the light. We thank you for your interest in our products. We provide natural, pasture raised beef from Black Angus, uh, Black Angus based cattle. Our cattle are managed on high quality forages, and dry aged for remark. Ooh, dry aged, remarkable beef flavor and tenderness. Satisfaction should be expected and always guaranteed. So that's that's at the bottom of the page of the price list here. So here right. we have um, this is our our local grower that we buy all our um, our, our hay from, and it, it breaks it down in steaks, roast, and then special selections. So go down the list there real quickly. 
The only thing I can afford is liver. <laughs> <laughs> so they three dollars a pound. Well, he, that's the price list. So what I did, yeah. I told my wife. I said, you know what? She's like, I, he's got to go pick it. You know. My wife, she's always like, you know, and I'm like, all right, well, you didn't tell me what you want. I got to turn the, the, the list in today. I said, look, babe, I said, take, you ready? Baller. I said, can we afford $300? Yes, we can afford $300. I said, take $300 and, and figure out on this list what we buy the most of. Yeah. Most of or what we don't buy that often because it's too expensive. So she she took three hundred dollars. Well, she took three hundred dollars. That was her budget, but you know she said she picked out two ribeye steaks, but it's seventeen dollars a pound. Of course, those ribeye steaks aren't going to be a pound of ribeye. No, they probably you might get you might get three steaks to a pound. Right. So she said, you know, uh, you know, two ribeye steaks, or I, I don't know. Now well, that, well, don't you want the strips? I want the yeah. I thought you were a strip man. I am a strip man, and so she went down the list and and. Uh, what happened is she she got filet mignons, she got ribeye steaks, New York strips. I think she got a T-bone. She got um, uh, uh, some ground beef, and then she got the standing rib roast. Because I know we we have that normally during Christmas time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's she get. I gave her three hundred bucks, and I'm like, going, all right, just you know, fill out the stuff that we normally buy. And that might be too expensive during the thing. So, is there anything on there that interests you? Standing rib roast, eighteen bucks, well, London uh, broil. That, yeah, that's that, that's too big. I would I would buy a standing rib roast and you know and let Amy cook it here, and then the three of us can eat off it. Uh, See, I've never done I've never done this before, so this is all new to me. You've never bought bulk? No, I've never bought in bulk. That's why I was talking about the the guy in the. Uh, look at that. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Don't I've never, breathe over there. <laughs> I never, I've never bought the stuff out of the back of the freezer. The truck guy, I've never bought that. It's always gone to a, a place, Sam's Club or Publix or Petty's Meats. Now, Cos- and, Costco, you can get some good deals on beef. Right. So that's that's. Uh, I've never done this. But this is dry aged. All and, right. Oh man. All you, right. You can't. You All know. right. <laughs> I'm just saying. I gave her 300 bucks. That was her limit. That was her budget. Oh, you know what? Uh, if I look over here, I'll tell you what she bought. Hold on. Here we go. She bought. Look at your list there. You guys watching on the video, you can see right here on the screen. She said she bought four fillets, two ribeyes, two strips, two skirts, four pounds of ground beef, and one standing rib roast. So that should keep us under the $300 mark. Yes. So that's what we got. And then there's other stuff like round, round. Uh, I have round sirloin or sirloin tip roast, uh, boneless chuck roast. I have round. That's that. That's the long roast beef. I'll go with that. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's about it's about uh, it's about four or five inches. I'm in kind diameter. of I'm kind of upset she didn't buy a bunch of cube steak because I love cube steak. I love cube steak. You gotta beat the shit out of them. I though. know. Even I though, like beating the yeah. shit out of it and just <laughs> even though they were already tenderized. I mean, I've had cube steaks. Damn, talk about what? What, what did the guy say? He felt, felt like it was a boot. Yeah, eating a boot oh, or a shoe. God damn, you gotta pull that shit apart. Yeah, but you ever had um? Uh, what's the meal that I cooked the other day? I say cooked. I put it in the crock pot. I had um. Oh Christ! Country fried steak. I no, like I didn't that. have country. I love country fried steak. It's a mess to make in the kitchen. It's it's just all over the place. Yeah. But um, oh, I, almost like a Salisbury steak type thing. Not a Salisbury steak, but we did like cube steak, pounded them out, put them in the crock pot, put the gravy and stuff in it, and let it be tender. Yeah. She cooked it. Well, in, you, yeah, if you cook them forever, then yeah. they're tender. So that's uh, that's the thing. You ready for your speed round? Okay. Okay. You ready? Go. All right. So what do you think about switching up between daylight savings time and standard time? Go. I think it's a great idea. Um, and for you know farming com- com- uh, communities, it's great. But unfortunately, I don't think many states would ever think about doing that because of kid factor. Okay. During school year. All right. Uh, butter chicken, uh, butter chicken or ribs in a quick pot. Go. Okay. Quick pot. By me. By that I mean my my, my pressure cooker. Fantastic. Buttered, buttered, buttered. Everything's good with butter. Chicken or ribs though. Oh, chicken. Why chicken over ribs? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just uh, I, I like. Ribs are ribs are a lot of work, and if you don't, you do the ribs right. Right. I, I could never get them right. I mean, if I, I buy ribs, I have to buy them in a package. Okay. Uh, should race be considered for college admission? Go. No. 
No, you got to go more than that. Oh, more than that? No, no. I don't Tell think, me why. I don't think race should be considered because I think everybody should begin on an e- even playing field. Everybody should be given the same tests. Everybody should be judged on the same levels. And there you go. All right. Amazon Prime Shopping Day. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. July 16th. Same as uh, Black July Day? Black July. Well, that's what it's going to be called, um, you know. Uh, just like uh, Black Friday after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to have a Black July day. Okay. And that's Amazon day. Uh, Mrs. or Mr. Spain won Miss Spain. Go. Okay. Miss Mr. Spain won, who was a transvestite, won, actually won Miss Spain. I don't know if they knew that this was a, it was a miss. Mm-hmm. I mean, was so, a mister. So, so uh, mister had a penis and went to a miss? Yes, and won for the country of Spain. In the, what, Miss Universe contest? No, in the Miss Spain contest. Okay, and then Miss Spain goes to what? Goes to Miss, uh, um, yeah, Miss Universe. So is there a... Sti- or I don't know, maybe Miss Europe? Okay, so... Because, like, there's a Miss America. All right, so we need to del- dive into that later. All right, um, Oprah for president. Uh, I, I, you know, I think she'd get a lot of votes. Okay. Uh, and she's a very bright person. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'd vote for her. It mm-hmm. depends on who she was running against. What's her What's her uh, What's her platform? Affiliation? I don't know. No platform. Uh, well, I guess her shoes. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> what does she think about you know this, and what uh, does she think I, about I, that? Yeah, I don't know. She's not running, so I don't think she's um, uh, put any platform forth yet. Okay. Has she Has she made notion of that she wants to be president or no? No, just some people out there were thinking that you know maybe uh, Oprah ought to run. Okay, Joe Jackson is dead and buried next to Michael Jackson. Right or wrong? Uh, no, I don't know. He was he was a very abusive father, and uh, most of the most of the family didn't get along with him, and most of the family is not excited about him being next to Michael. Well, you know um, what they what studies have shown, and, and I say studies have shown because that's easy to say. Um, the doctor for Michael Jackson and Joe Jackson and all that stuff, the family doctor. Actually um, admitted to that Joe Jackson gave Michael Jackson um, the chemical castration medicine to keep his voice high. Really? Did you know that? No, I did not. Yep. Joe Jackson took that to his grave. And I know he, he gave him a lot of propofol. Yep. And, well, not that doctor. The other oh, family well, doctor. Oh, okay. As they were growing up, you know, the, the doctor. Pediatrician. That, yeah, the pediatrician said that they they gave him uh, the the chemical castration so he could maintain his high. High pitch, so so he can never get a boy pregnant. <laughs> so that's good to know. <laughs> on that note, what did we learn he today? Can roll it up and roll over and stick it in his father's <laughs> ass. Yeah. <laughs> so what did we learned today? There's a shock off the uh, coast of Carolinas. Yeah. Well, I I tell you what, off Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, a lot of sharks. Yeah. Did you? Uh. Well, not as much as um Ponce Inlet and Montauk Montauk Highway. Monto Point. Sure. Uh, did Papa John say a bad word? Um, it all depends mm, on how you dis- dissect it. Yeah. All right. And uh, the the fat ass run fat. Don't chase your neighbor with a tractor. Ah, uh, go get him, good. Go get him, big guy. <laughs> Santa. Um, Costco, oh, not Costco, but um, Sam. Po- no, no, Costco. Po- Polar yeah. sources at uh, Costco. Can- yeah, Costco's changing uh, their yeah. stuff to a bunch of healthier stuff. Yeah. And then um, make sure if your kids are young, over the age of eighteen, they leave the house. Make sure they have some kind of, uh, some kind of influence that they're not Snapchatting a seventy-two-year-old woman's death on her deathbed. Yeah, boy. You know what I mean? Ugh. Uh, right is right and wrong is wrong, and that's how we survive. Uh, on behalf of myself and all of our great listeners, that's Teacher Man saying good night. Good night, good night. And my name is Teacher Man, or my name is, <laughs> I gotta fix that. <laughs> uh, my name is the Deacon saying good night and good night. Good night. There you go. Uh, another one in the can. I like, I like the setup a little bit better because it bookends. When he opened the show, uh-huh. Shark, Papa John, Run Fat Ass Run, Menu, or the uh, the items going on Menu, and Snapchat. And then we came back around and said, okay, what did we learn? <coughs> Just a quick reminder. The little odds and ends. I like this. So if you can continue doing this. I'll try. This is this is awesome. I like that a lot. Okay. Um, the And I, I want to put like a timer. 
I did that. I did that the day I brought your truck home. Mm -hmm. But I like this because stuff that we might not we might touch on. Like I, I canceled out. Like I said, it's just ideas. Well, you know? here's the thing. Um, it canceled out the cancel. I canceled out the cancel or coconut water. But these are things that you want to talk about. So that's kind of, at the end of the show. If you think about it, from a listener's aspect. At the end of the show, these are things that we didn't touch on that are totally not related to anything. Right. Off the scope. Off the scope, but at least it'll go at the end of the day going, oh, I really didn't know that Miss Spain was Mr. Spain. Or Joe Jackson is buried next to Michael Jackson. I mean, these are things that... And it would bring the listeners back and it might create... You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, that's what sent us over the top in uh, Jersey. Top ten. Yeah. <laughs> top ten. I need your top 10 things that you want to talk about. If we get to them, if we don't, then we'll do a, a speed round. I like that a lot. I really do. And when I play this, I think you're going to like it too. Oh, the speed round? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Well, it keeps me on my toes anyway. Right. <laughs> you got to think about what the hell we talked about all day. Uh, oh, come all on, right. you bastard. <laughs> All right, uh, get ready to sign off on the camera, so. <coughs> Good night. <coughs> Wrong camera there, stupid. Good night. <laughs>